people about us. We're your at-home interactive weekly geek con, all blended with wit, sarcasm, and a pub-like atmosphere. We're adults talking about adult topics and using adult language. We laugh and make jokes about almost everything. We don't intend to upset, but some folks have their feelings hurt easily. This is all done in humor and the style of the great offenders such as George Carlin, Red Fox, Lenny, Bruce, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Wanda Sykes, Sam Kinison, George Lopez, Lisa Lampanelli, Chris Rock, and others. So grab your vice of choice, sit easy. back, relax, this is all and done in humor yourself in the, the style of great, great people, people, hot toddies, and guests alike, because here we come. Put that long day behind you, good times lie ahead, with company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let the stories your ear, cause we're the And welcome to Monday, April 16th episode of Talk the Tavern. We didn't start the fire. I am getting a feedback echo. Elizabeth, is your headset set up okay? No, remember my... Okay, we got that thing going on again? We didn't get that corrected? No. Okay. Just checking. Uh, Night Owl, thanks for that subscription. Appreciate it. And there's Talking Toey. You're welcome. I, I gotta let her know Toey. that uh, my subscription is up to, so it's time to re-give it to her. Because, yeah, it's her turn. Okay. Anybody that is an Amazon Prime member, you can subscribe to our channel for free. Well, at no cost to you. We get money, but no extra cost to you. There we go. So, hello to the hot toddies. Let's do our opening toast and our patch check. Got a patch. Who doesn't have a patch? I don't have a patch. Huh, you get to buy the drinks then. <laughs> we Come say on. to the bartender. Okay, let's just Got a sign, too. Oh, that's okay. I don't oh. need to buy them. Just come to my house. I'll make them. There we go. That's good enough for us. <laughs> okay, let's see how I can do this. Um, um, mm. uh, see, with the whole topic, it's just there is no short toast. Hey, here's to taking personal responsibility and fix, fixing issues instead of bitching about them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, everybody yeah, watching, let us know what your vice is today. What are you drinking, smoking, snorting, shooting, beating, whipping, rubbing, paying for? Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. I think I will start yeah, out with introductions. The lovely and talented Andrea, co-host and life co-host oh. on the show. Who were you expecting? You thought I was going for Ed with that one again, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, my vice today is tea. Always, and it's cinnamon vanilla tea mm. and Nutella. Nice. That's weird. I, I had a Nutella sandwich just before we came on air tonight. That's it's nice. good stuff. Yeah. Also, I have a new vice. Kind of a new vice. I got. I get that Ipsy bag with the makeup, and I have this star tru- starstruck mascara, and it's got a stamp. So I have a little star. Oh. Madam Get, Madam Get, okay. all like that. You could, so you could just like stamp your yeah. face whenever you want now. Yeah, Crazy. stamp your face. You could stamp. My face. <laughs> no brown okay. starfish. I might uh, pay to see that. <laughs> you Mike. know, if you're paying, we might do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have no shame. Well, I had an extra show. Speaking of extra shows and no shame, we also have Elizabeth the Pickle Lady with us tonight. Hello, Hello everyone from New York. Um, well, I tell you, a lot tried to keep me from getting here. We had death on the train, we had flooding rains, feast and famine, and I saw my first city we at trying to get on the train. But he wasn't willing to give up his milkshake. And we met. I don't know, what do I do? I am partaking in some lovely chamomile ginger honey tea. And I'm a little down for the count. I'm going to try to make it to the end. And water. Lots and lots of water. Cheers. All right, staying away from the alcohol tonight. <laughs> yes. And speaking of things that will put you down for the count, we also have Ed Summers with us. What up, y'all? Um, whoop, whoop. I, hmm, hmm, I am drinking one of our sponsors, 
John J. Bowman's Bowman's Distillery. Mm-hmm. And and that's it. No other vices tonight because my pipe's broken. I hate it when my pipe's broken. I thought, thought you were more than one. I brought two to my eye, Ed. Ed, do we need to bring you a couple vape pens just so you have a backup? Nah, that's all right. Okay. okay. Just trying to tell me something. Probably. Anything in particular? Should we just make shit up? <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Tonight would have been the first night I, I vaped in like three weeks, so it's probably oh. telling me just don't do it. Oh, I've seen that, Nick, because you're going to get lung liquid and you're going to get the <laughs> consumption from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to sing a solo like Fantine. <laughs> and speaking of things that we love solo, we also have Kevin Cruz straight from the UK. Hey. Hey. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, tonight, as always, I will be smoking hand rolled drum tobacco, uh, and I will be drinking uh, Nescafe Zero coffee at ridiculously strong strength in order to allow me to stay awake to the Herculean 4 a.m. finishing time of the show live here in the UK. So, Kevin, later you have to tell me if you have any day off this week that you want to be on one of the shows that's actually there at a reasonable hour for you. I, do you know what? I'll have a look now at my rotor. Okay, look that over. Let me tell them who I am and then get our guests introduced and we can talk about that a little bit, okay? Somebody left, like, messages on my videos, and I don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm Travis Sivart. I'm the host tonight. I have many vices. I have tequila, which the real reason I'm drinking this at all is when I set up the little bar area over here, I kind of took the extra stuff and put them all in pretty bottles, thinking Andrea drinks tequila. She would clean this out and let me put something else in it soon. That hasn't worked, so now I'm like, I just need to get rid of this nasty stuff. No. Tequila. <laughs> Story and you're sticking to it. That's right. With a Vienna lager and, uh, of course, coffee with creamer. And But wait, there's more. I think we're going to go with the three-hour cigar tonight. The, the Gloriana Cubana series are black. Now, speaking of things that are black, our hey. special guest tonight... <laughs> Yeah, I'm totally black. <laughs> yeah, baby. Sorry, I, some ethnic background that's in a minority. I don't know. <laughs> you all look alike. <laughs> Sarah, can't tell you apart. Jews, blacks, whatever. <laughs> this is this is either going to make the show or get us banned. One of the two. Um, Sarah Camerata, also win. known as... Hmm, what? You're what? I said what? throw a win. Oh, yes. Uh Right name, Sarah Camerata, also known as Calamity Dawn, bartender extraordinaire, and personality that only matches her beauty. Oh. Aww. Well, so, they're both got... great or both horrible. Take your pick. Uh, six and one half dozen of the other. I have two vices today. Well, Ooh. this is just an example of a vice. This mm-hmm. is from founders brewery out in michigan it's their uh, limited release of kbs the kentucky breakfast stout mm. it's a barrel aged stout with chocolate and coffee Doesn't that sound mm. and it is fan drink it drink it tell us what you taste <laughs> well unlike some barrel aged um beers the bourbon doesn't like hit you right in the face right away. Mm-hmm. It's a mellow counterpart to the chocolate and a heavy dose of coffee. This is a rich, thick, heavy beer that is practically a meal in its own right. Sounds beautiful. It really does. It is gorgeous. And then when I'm finished with that, I'm going to drink this. What's that? Oh. This is Plantation Pineapple. Mm-hmm. It is rum. It's by the Plantation Distillery. Distillery. It's called an artisan infusion, and it's a, it's Plantation Distillery. It's a Caribbean spirit, and what's special about it is, unlike other pineapple-flavored rums, this isn't a pineapple-flavored rum. It's an infused rum. They not only use actual pineapple in the infusion process, they actually use the rinds of the pineapple and macerate it with the rum and then age it a little bit. And it's – I keep saying I'm going to make a cocktail with it, like a daiquiri or, or a pina colada, and yet every bottle I've gotten, I've just drank you know, I've never it's masturbated a- with a pineapple. How do they do that? <laughs> Macerated. That's yeah, when you take something and you mix it with sugar different. and you let it smooth. Too, too small. Yeah, it won't fit. <laughs> That's what lube is for. For my pineapple? I don't want to put no, it in. It too small. Oh. <laughs> 
Hello, you. Hi, Good folks. To you. Uh, Lady Shipper says <laughs> her totally vices it. tonight are Mountain Dew, Beanie Weenie, and Mac and Cheese. All right. So, um, Beanie Weenie, define for Brit, please. <laughs> it's little tiny hot dogs and beans. Oh, okay. It's the the brown pinto beans in a ketchup like sweet sauce with nasty cheap mushy hot dogs diced up in it. And oh, it's okay. fabulous. Gotcha. It's it's like one of the best comfort foods we have in the US. Sarah, my beer doesn't taste like what you described in your bottle and I'm I'm upset about that. <laughs> Devil's uh, do you, is a I don't, fine logger, I don't know if you get found I don't know if you get founders out where you are. We do. Oh, then run out to your store and find some before they run out of this stuff. You may have to go to a specialty store, but I found it even in uh, Food Lion, Farm Fresh. Yeah. Now, the uh, the KBS is uh, definitely a pricey one. Here in Ohio, a four-pack of that is like 23 bucks, And I did not flinch at buying it because I know what it tastes like. You know, What's that I- alcohol level reading? I don't skimp when it comes to my beer. What alcohol level is it? Oh, gosh. Um, it's gotta be it's a, a heavy one. one. It's it's over 10%. I think it's like 12%. Ooh, nice. It's an imperial. So. Elizabeth. Ah. Elizabeth, you got to meet with me later this week, and we got to get on privately and fix your headset problem because you're, you're getting cut out on, and we're not getting all the uh, wonderfulness that is you. So we'll fix your tech problem sometime this week, okay? Yeah, we're jumping all over you. <laughs> yeah, we're verbally walking over you and not even realizing it's happening because of how your mic is. So you did- know, it's 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 for the best. I'm feeling <laughs> ill, so I'll just I'll just take it easy. <laughs> you take it however you want it, baby. Thanks, Daniel. Appreciate it. But, Sarah, uh, I was talking to yes. Andre earlier, and I, I was pointing out about how some things we look at and how they feel pricey. But how many of us have gone to a specialty coffee shop and paid five to seven dollars for a cup of coffee? So to pay that for a beer that you're going to enjoy just as much as that coffee. Four. There you go. <laughs> there goes Kevin's cock. Kevin playing with his cock. It's uh, I, I suddenly oh. thought I was watching Moana. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jamin. Thanks, Navy Dad. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you both for yeah. the, uh, cheers and bits and. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for the glass, glass already. Right Look at it. It is. It is just going up. The way Navy Dad goes down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, what is it? What? Cannoli. <laughs> we had Bob Eisenstein and Victor Sierra on Tuesday for three hours. And Bob, Navy Dad, popped on, I guess, while at work. And you know how, like, last week he was asking everybody to say cannoli. He, he then asked this deep, throaty... <laughs> <laughs> and there's somebody playing with her pussy. You <laughs> kidding? Uh, see, and and now Navy Dad says hello, my white brothers and sisters, and Ed. What up, bro? Power to the people. Uh, but anyhow, yes, he asked the Frenchman to say cannoli for him. It confused him a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, we've got a we've got a lean in guest there, a creeper. Where is he? It's a she, and it's my Hi. mama. Hi. Hi, Mom. Hi, Hi Mom. Yeah, she, she moved out here from uh, Ohio to be closer to me and the grandkids and such, and uh, and she's curious like a kitty cat. Nice. So she wanted to come over and see what was going on. Are you going to climb across your keyboard? Yeah, she moved here from Arizona. Gotcha. Okay, so you're still in Ohio. Ohio. Right? Okay, gotcha. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Wondering what you're doing, who you're talking to. Been subjected to by you've been subjected to a drive-by momming. <laughs> it's funny at our um, age, most of our moms don't it. drive anymore. My mama would like to know where she can watch this, and that's on Twitch, right? Twitch.tv yeah. slash Talk of the Tavern. Twitch. I'll text you the uh, info. To the technology. It should be the last <laughs> thing that I sent over to you in Facebook. Yep, I've got it. Okay. Speaking what up, Ian? Good to see you, bro. Shit, all the sex or stuff. 
Ian! You know, I came to realize Ian is one of the people that I interact with most on Facebook. It's, uh, which, by the way, Sarah, if you notice that I unfriended you recently on Facebook, that's not your fault. I unfriended like 700 people because I was going to try to leave Facebook. I actually didn't notice. I'm sorry. No, it's, <laughs> that's why I tell you in case you're like, tomorrow you're like, he unfriended me. We were just on a show. What'd I do? What'd he do? Um, <laughs> well, if, if, if I looked you up tomorrow, I'd probably know what I did. It'll probably happen in the next two and a half hours. You're like, he should be sending like me your- flowers instead. <laughs> I like the idea that of all those 700 people, Travis, no one noticed. Yeah, I know. And you've now gone around inadvertently apologizing for absolutely no reason to 700 people. I like to think of it as explaining. <laughs> your it Britishness has rubbed off on him. Yes. Quit rubbing your little Brit on me. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was the, the British comedian guy. I think that's guy, in certain states. The, the British comedian guy, Dave Gorman, went on Facebook and all over social media, didn't he? And found every other Dave Gorman he could find in the world and then made a TV show where he went and randomly visited as many of them as would let him come. <laughs> and uh, so I did the same thing on Facebook. So I'm friends with about half a dozen other Kevin Cruz. What's the name of the bear again? Paddington. Which? Paddington. No, 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 no. The, the stout. Oh, oh the beer. Oh, the K- beer. Uh, it's KBS. <laughs> KBS, thank you. That's for Kentucky Bourbon stuff. Oh, um, Elizabeth, Kentucky Bourbon. Everything that we talk about, she draws on her little board. Oh, cool. Everything. Sometimes. Sometimes everything. Scary. <laughs> yeah, the Founders people, they also make, in addition to the KBS, they make an even more limited run of what they call CBS, mm-hmm. the Canadian Breakfast Out, which is mm-hmm. aged with maple. Oh, nice. For those of you who like that kind of thing. I have a tobacco that would and go really well with it. I have bacon that goes really well with it. Then again, I have bacon that goes really well with everything. So, you know. Okay. I love their breakfast out. It's just really, really yummy. And since we're talking beer real quick, I love a really good Irish stout. And I'll tell you, Southern Tier makes an incredible Irish stout. Yeah. I haven't tried their Irish stout. They don't make it every year. Some years they don't. And one year I wrote them an email. Very <laughs> I usually stick to my Scottish ones, like Innocent Gun. Ooh. Oh wait, mm-hmm. Spawn Hegner likes maple amber. Oh, oh, I like your your neck thing. Yeah, this is actually my wedding band. Yeah. Or do you mean Andrea's neck thing? I meant Andrea's, but now I'm looking at two oh. of these with stuff on. Very cool. Yeah. I kept breaking my hand, and they kept having to cut my wedding band off. So my husband oh. got me a chainmail necklace that matched one I bought him years ago, and and that's my wedding band. I was going to say, is that all the rings they cut off of you? (laughs) (laughs) According to the police report, yes. Well, there you go. (laughs) Uh, You know, aside, there's no police report. I don't get caught. (laughs) (laughs) I got a shot. Yeah. It was that night in jail. I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I got the bill and skipped out on you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't know if Bob, if this is a real beer or if Bob is making a joke. I think he's requesting a beer. Bald Bishop Stout. I'm looking it up. It's a I'll foamy give you head. a stout one, big boy. Yeah, when you pour it, you want a foamy That's head on dirty. that one. <laughs> No, nope. <sighs> no, nope, it's a penis. Yes, we know. <laughs> it's not a beer; it's a penis. We we had no question about it because we know Bob. <laughs> but we wanted to. Well, let I you didn't look it know, up. and I don't know Bob. Well, you know, there is a chance there would be a beer That's out funny. there with that name. <laughs> well, there's a yeah, beer. the one time. You know, there's beer. There's a beer that that the bottle is stuffed inside of a taxidermied squirrel, so you never know. Ew. Right. Oh. You. It's a very expensive beer, apparently. Uh, uh. <laughs> and that just I was going to talk about something, but I'll wait until the news part. Is it a gray squirrel, a red squirrel? I mean, what kind of squirrel are we talking here? Uh, well, look it, back you drink it like out of the squirrel's mouth, oh, wow. or out of the you got to lift the tail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. I'm sending a link to Travis on Facebook so he oh, can I, I just no, want to know what it is. That way I get a free uh taxidermy squirrel. 
Oh no, it's a it's twenty k for the uh for the bottle, give or take. Well, I'll just go ahead and put that on your wish list. Right? By the way, it's fifty five percent ABV, so but it's not so much right? a beer anymore. <laughs> he just wants the squirrel. Well, I'm afraid there's probably easier ways to get the squirrel than to buy a twenty thousand dollar beer. But this one has a top hat. Yes, it does. It's, it's hard fancy. to find those in the wild. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I saw well, one outside the other day. In a top hat? Yeah. Cool. It's prom. It was prom this past weekend. <laughs> There's spring formal. <laughs> Squirrel prom. <laughs> oh, very good. Anyhow, oh yeah. I've seen Where do we before. go from here? Uh, well, it's I, I'm busy looking at because there's also like a it's what is it a beaver a muskrat there's something besides a squirrel you can get yes. there. Yes, a stuffed beaver. <laughs> well, there's who doesn't want a little stuffed beaver? I can eat some stuff. I know, I like stuffed beaver. <laughs> oh my god! Yep, yeah, there's okay. just this generation. Let's see. <laughs> We're on topic. <laughs> There we go. Okay, let's see here. We can go straight into the topic now. It's it's 20 minutes in. Did everybody mention their vices? We did a patch check. We did all that. Um, so yeah, oh wait. I've got so many cords. Mm -hmm. I've got so many cords. I've tangled up. <laughs> By the way, at Kevin's place, uh, it, when we went to visit Kevin in the on the Isle of Wight, I did have a squirrel beer there. It was, yeah. it was not made with real squirrel. No, and it was no, sadly. Inserted I've always been disappointed squirrels. in that. You've been what? Yeah. I've always been disappointed that I've never could get Girl Scouts made with real Girl Scouts. Girl Scout cookies made with real Girl Scouts. <laughs> Turn it over. No, Turn but Girl over. Scouts are made with real brownies. <laughs> that was an old joke. Shit. <laughs> 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 I want puppies. Nobody knows that one. You ever Why? hear the dead, you ever hear the uh, Doctor Demento song "Dead Puppies"? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Since I was Classic. just a wee lad. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go into topic. Oh, Elizabeth wandered off. Shall we wait or just start yeah, talk about her? She's, she's here. She can She'll hear be us. There. there. She's back. Wait, her I'm boobs. Saying, her boobs are sending me a message. Keep calm and let it go. Disney! Uh, let it go. I'm entering the beaver phase, so let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> a Justin Beaver? <laughs> beaver! Oh, fever. I'm a believer. Um, beaver. Now, you see, we got to decide. We got to make a decision here. Before we go into the topic, we need to make a decision. Is it cool if we redeem. And for those of you listening, Sarah, you in particular. No! Uh, no! <laughs> we, as we've been redeeming sounds, we also have other things we can redeem. For example, an Ed rant, beauty tips from Andrea, dad joke from me, Kevin reading something sexy in his little British accent. And I've I, We haven't ever clarified, can we... I, I, I'll I, answer that question. Let me finish the damn question. No, I'm going to rant, damn it. No, it's not fucking cool for us to redeem shit against one another. <laughs> Why not, Ed? Tell us a little I'm... more, would you? <laughs> I really have no idea where any of this is going, but I'm amused. Hang on. <laughs> the bottom line of the Let show. Let me get the popcorn. <laughs> I, I can't tell Elizabeth wants to say something or she's just doing the wave. <laughs> I'm doing the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> the pop <-ray. laughs> <laughs> Message for you, Elizabeth. I'll let you get that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought else. that's why she was moving. Uh, <coughs> Skipper, Mrs. He's Skipper, nasty. Talking Toey, Ian, uh, Von Hagner. I want to ask a question of all you guys as well as my co-hosts here. Previously, before we had the internet breakdown that we just got the gear to help fix, I would play music during the show. Since then, we have just gone to the format of just taking a break twice a show and not having music. Now that I have the ability to bring music back on... Do you guys think me playing six or eight tracks during the show is something we should go back to doing? Or leave it like it is with just the two 
refill breaks. Let me know your thoughts there in the chat. I'm really curious about that. And Ed, Kevin, Andrea, Elizabeth, got thoughts on this? I don't know. I think uh, in a sense I haven't missed it, but it is kind of fun sometimes to be able to pick and choose, you know, humorously linked songs that kind of go with the topic we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I think it's got its place. Maybe if the episode... There's, there's, a completely, there's a completely sort of grey, average, non-committal British-type answer for you. Very good. <laughs> Maybe if the episode is okay with like certain songs that we think of because of the topic, then yeah, otherwise... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, Elizabeth, anything to add to this? What, you what mean, if it's so, something that will go with the topic, sure. Yeah. Let, let's. For instance, it would be great to play We Didn't Start the Fire tonight for We Didn't Start the Fire. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Elizabeth, thoughts? Uh, are you going to play like the entire song or snippets of song? Or what are we talking Originally, what we would do is throughout the episode, we would, for example, between the intro and the beginning of the topic, I would play a whole song. And but we were on, we weren't on video. Later, when we were on video, I would still do it, but that's when we would go get refills. So the people watching us would watch blank chairs or us sitting there fiddling or typing to each other, because we would auto mute, and we could talk without them hearing us. Now. We cannot auto mute, which means if we talk, we're talking over the song. But at this point in time, we're kind of open to discussion. Do we want to do snippets? For example, I do have We Didn't Start the Fire loaded up. I also have a, one or two other songs loaded up that are very appropriate for this topic. Um, and I'll get to those. Those are some surprises. And now, Sarah, at this point in time, <laughs> I've checked with them, so feel free to chime in also if you have thoughts on this. Because here's the downsides of this, guys. First of all, down the road, if I put it up on YouTube, if there is copyrighted material, I cannot monetize that three-hour episode. Which, at this point in time, what's the matter, Sarah? Uh, apparently, Harry Anderson from Night Court just passed away. Oh, my. Uh, I, I saw somebody commenting about uh, someone else passing away today, and so I looked it up, and I, I knew him. I met him. Oh. So, sorry, I was just kind of... No, 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 that's... that's Shocked by that, and a little bit, a little bit saddened because Night when I court. was a kid, my sorry, I'm segueing into memory now. <laughs> when I was a kid, my uh, my mama used to be a magician, and we were living in we were stationed in Fort Hood, but we would go to Austin for these magic magic club meetings. Mm -hmm. And Harry Anderson was one of the guys there, and it was just before he got his start in his career on Night Court and and out as a actual celebrity. And I remember he was a really nice guy, and he occasionally performed um, at this uh, Pipe Oregon Pizza Palace before he got famous, and did mag and did a magic trick for me, special for me on my birthday. So, I, I I'm I'm a drink drink there to Harry. Go. Here's to Harry. Harry. Here's to Harry. <clears throat> Oh, by the way, a few comments off the group here. Um, Talking Toey says, I get up for snacks when you guys take a break, so I don't hear the music anyway. Vaughn Hegner says, Messa Dupree told me she misses music and it could be appropriate. Um, Ian says he agrees with you, Andrea, which I think your comment was basically, uh, if it's appropriate, play it. Otherwise, don't take up time with it. Yeah. Elizabeth, now that you've got a little more info, you got thoughts on this? Uh, you should use people you can get permission from, especially the up and comings, the people that want more exposure. That's no and problem. I know that I would a, add a bit of work. I, I have a whole yeah. show on Tuesday called Tunes Day that is all around that. But even with that, now here's the bottom line: I can play anybody as much as I want. I cannot monetize it, but I can legally play whoever I want. <laughs> as much as I want. So, that's not... Yes, Kevin? So I got one. Please, sir, hand up. So, just a thought then, but how about if we do it like this? If you've got a serious topic or a comedy topic, you know, it's kind of obvious we announced that beforehand so people know the general feel of the show. So if we're doing something that's linked to music, like we've discussed great live performances before, you know, that kind of topic, if it's something that has a link or a musical tie, we do music just on those shows. 
So once and again, not we're on going the others. if the music is appropriate. We've already had this. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sarah, did you have something new to add? And I'm, I'm clipping you guys quick because I don't want to take up an hour discussing it. Yeah. Um, I think you should take it on a show-by-show basis. Okay, so if you have a show where you think – when appropriate, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I like this idea best out of all of them. Um, there, there was a few other reasons that I was uh, – you know, watching us do nothing during a song isn't necessarily that exciting. But if we're doing a whole song and grooving to it or getting a drink, that's one thing. If we're talking over the song, which is something we can now do also – because it's great to just drop the volume of the song and we talk over it. That's great. And uh, also, as Elizabeth asked, you know, doing a part of it, we don't have to play a whole four-minute song. We'll do 90 seconds. Yeah. Yes, Elizabeth. Yes. But uh, if you can't monetize it, don't do it. Well, here's the deal about monetization. Mo- YouTube is the only one that's the issue. And I am only 25% of the way to being monetized in YouTube. For the third time, because YouTube keeps changing what you need to have to monetize. So at this point in time, I need 750 more subscriptions and 3,000 more hours a year viewed. So it's a while before we're going to get to that. All right. Um, and also, if we're, we we can fade back and punt when we get to that point and see if it's if, if it makes a difference. Ed, did you have a... I think it'll be a little bit cooler now, though, since we all can hear it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. Okay. We so can we even can... sing along. We can. So let's go on with the topic, then. <laughs> Pick, then. Okay. Let's go. Are you going to sing? <laughs> Ed's going to. Yeah. <laughs> Skipper says music when it's inappropriate might be funnier. I'll drop that down a little bit and let us talk, because that's a five-minute song. <laughs> oh, it covers a, a fair song. amount of history. Think about how long this song would be oh, now if he did it again. You know what? Well, you know what? The show's over. He, he he started on the year he was born, and that's the first line oh. of the song. And he moved it forward to when the song came out, and that was the history he covered. And, and this mm-hmm. is was when this song came out. First of all, I remember uh, one comedian talking about it, going, "Billy." Chill out. Nobody fucking blamed you, okay? <laughs> well, on the other hand, it's, it's very valid of all this stuff is because of what came before. So, but, mm-hmm. you know, one thing I think about the song is, of course, you know, we didn't start the fire. It's always been burning, burning since the world's been turning, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> yes, it goes on to say that we tried to fight the fire. But at the same time, it's it's like while we while we like as Generation Xers didn't start 
the Vietnam War and the stuff that happened before we were born. We can't dis we can't completely dis distance ourselves from the fact that our people had a point a place in it. If that makes sense. I know what you're saying there. And and there is still a mess. Uh, as a society, we still get to clean up a mess made by our elders. Um, the honest yeah. truth is, uh, we <laughs> see. I love the Ray Charles look over there. Out of here. I don't know if Ray Charles ever did the devil's horns, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm out of here. I've got to respond to Rob. Rob. I don't know if she's blocking her right. face or wants to say something. Okay. It's, it's an interesting point. I talked about this with my class today because they said some things, my third graders. And I explained, um, somebody said to me, whispered, that their friend told them that people are starting a World War III behind the scenes, and he's a third grader, you know, and, and who knows what they're going to tell me. And I told him a story, I'll make it brief as I can. I used to live in Berlin, I, in fifth and sixth grade, I was there. They used to tell us that, because um, I went to a German-American school, uh, where we learned classes in German and English, and they would say, it was 1985, and they said, you will never see this wall come down in your life. You will never see it. And people were getting shot, getting too close to it, people were escaping, it was horrible. In 1989, I was walking through a dorm, I looked across to a TV, and there were people dancing on the wall. And I shared that with in every age of time, people think it's the end of the world. And yes, we have to clean things up, but we do. And this is the power of man, and kindness is our humanities. We do clean it up. And people don't know the end. They like to be fearful and obstinate, but you know, just calm down, improve what you can, and move forward. End of times makes us feel important. <laughs> really, we feel like we're we're at the pinnacle of everything, and everything's just gonna die off after us. Des, good to see you, buddy. Well, I did. Hey, Des. Hope you're feeling better, man. Um, now, just so everybody knows, in case you didn't catch up, this show is about we complain about the next generation and the way they are staring at their phones or lazy or whatever. Um, we complain about the older generation and the mess they left behind for us to fix and all the crap we have to take care of that wasn't our doing. Well, my point being, and the reason for this show is, guess what? Our parents' generation did the same thing. They looked at us, and our generation went, you lazy little fuckers don't know how easy you have it. And they looked at their parents going, the fuck did you do before we got here? What, what is that? Um, it was Elvis Presley's fault. It, it was, with those little <laughs> rocking hips. Those head. hips of his. <laughs> Everything was good in the world until Elvis Presley. So my no, but you're you're right, Travis. Go ahead. I'm sure you like hearing those words. You're right, Travis. <laughs> I don't know what they mean. I've never heard them. I mean, when I was growing up, I remember, I remember my mama's, uh, my mom's, not my mama, my mom's parents uh, were visiting, and Grandpa Jones had said to me one day because I was kind of giving the whole attitude eye roll thing about doing my chores oh, that fine. day, and I was sassing my mom, and Grandpa Jones looked at me and said, "You know, in my day." You, you, you would I would never have even dreamed about sassing my parents because, you know, the the switch would have come out and I would have been my t hide would have been tanned if I'd even so much as rolled a single eyeball at my mom. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't understand. You have it so easy today. You know, you've got. He he went so far as being old enough and living in a rural enough place. He's like, you've got running water. You got indoor toilets. For half my life, I had to pee in a shed outside. You know what? I've had indoor plumbing all my life, but I have still used that shit on my kid. <laughs> because there are times where you have to realize, yeah, you might have it better than the previous generation, but you still have it better than a large percentage of the world. Mm -hmm. But to counter that, we might have it better than a large percent of the world, and one person may have it better than another person. Mm -hmm. But that does not make your own personal problems any less difficult to deal with. Do you think we allow so, the current generation to over-dramatize more because... Yes. What? Yes. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's, yes. that's what our previous generation was looking at us because, again, the world had expanded with telephones, VCRs, playing movies on demand via cable. Kind of, not the way we do now. Go ahead. But you know what? What? It's our fault. 
It is the previous generation's fault. Every generation that has come has wanted a better life right. for their offspring. We enable and our we have made their to lives be little better. bastards. <laughs> and then exactly. we get upset when they don't understand or seem to respect the difficulties that we help them avoid. I, I so, so totally agree on Sarah on this because I often say we weren't raised this way. Why are our children being raised? This because way? we didn't raise them. That way. <laughs> we didn't raise them the way we were raised because we wanted to raise them better. We thought. <laughs> I don't have children, so they're not my children. Well, I have to deal with your children. <laughs> but you're, you're a teacher. You're still helping raise the next generation. And but you don't want to or not. <laughs> I heard so. I don't know if someone said this or I've been talking to myself again, but it's like, <laughs> you know how you can tell a teacher? Because they hate fucking children. <laughs> well, they should. They're illegal. Andrea, what do you have to say? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no, I, you I, I agree with it. I, I believe, like with my own child, I wanted his life to be better. And a little bit easier, so I taught him the things I had learned the hard way. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't think any of us oh, believe now in we can a child, us. But now we wonder if maybe <laughs> it's not all. Is we can, mm -hmm. good. I was going to say, we can second guess ourselves as far as the way we, those of us who have kids, those of us who teach our children, those of us who just have to deal with somebody snot nosed brass at the, at the shopping mall. <laughs> we can't really second guess ourselves too much on this and we shouldn't get beat ourselves too much for it either but we should take responsibility for the fact that we are partly responsible for how the quote unquote millennials are turning out we are and there is overlap well, I did the I best wanna... I could and then he's is on it... his own so, so by the way I love avocado we... toast what you're saying is we shouldn't beat ourselves for it we should beat millennials <laughs> yes that's not exactly what I was saying but I'll go with it by the way, Des says, not all teachers, in reference to Elizabeth's comment, I come from a family of educators. And then he says, some things you just can't teach. This is something I have also said to my son. Yeah. I tell you these stories so you can avoid pitfalls that I fought my way into and went, fuck, I'm in a pit. Fight my way out of. And but some Yeah, things, that can bite you in the butt, too. <laughs> well, some things you can't teach. They have to experience it to learn the lesson. Elizabeth? Yeah, I'd like to respond to that comment. Of course I'm being facetious, right? Of course I love children. I'm willing to put up with other people's children. I am not allowed to beat or touch no, I, <laughs> teach I, them. I think what you and, just says is we hate all people. Yeah, yeah. And I think that one of the core elements that I teach, no matter what, I mean, there's a bunch and they'll creep up, but the big thing is you never stop learning. No matter what age you are, you're going to make mistakes. And we were talking about that today. You know, sometimes I can't even get out of the house without making 10, 20 mistakes. But that's the point is to keep learning. And that's the dessert of life because that's what improves you and that makes you better. And don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. Usually my first mistake of the day is waking up. <laughs> <laughs> now, somebody asked, how is millennial stuff my fault? I don't get yes. it. Yeah, um, and I wanted to address that. And here's as a guy, and I know that's a woman. So I really don't want a man to have to answer this and get beat for it. Go on. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that it's necessarily our fault. Right. But we do have a part to play on how millennials – and I, by the way, I actually really hate the labels Gen X, Millennial, Gen Y. Oh, so I do I. Really hate those labels <laughs> because we are still all people. Yes, we have different experiences and they tend to I – just, I just hate it. And I really hate millennials, and I think they get a rep, and I really think they get a bad rap. Thank I have, you. I have so-called millennials living in my basement. They're two of my two of my dearest friends, and I love them to death. But they are millennials. My son is a millennial, you know. How, um, what year and was I your son that. born? Uh, well, one son was born in '99, the other was born in 2001. Neither is a millennial by definition. But See, I hate that label. Finish your thought, <laughs> and then I'd like to define a few things if everybody's okay with that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each generation, and I'm kind of just stream of consciousing here, but each okay. generation is always saying the following phrase. You don't understand what it is to be me today. You don't understand what it, what it is to be a kid today. Oh, and by the way. The previous generation says. 
we say it to the yes. older generation and the younger generation. Exactly, we do. I've said it to my parents. I've said it to my kids. And we say it to our peers. The shit. <laughs> but my, my parents, and I know for a fact that my parents said it to their parents. Mm -hmm. My and my grandparents probably said it to their grand to, no the, to my great grandparents, you know, and so on and down the road. Oh no, keep going. Every generation says says that you don't understand what it is to be me in the world as it is today at my age. Right. And to be honest, me as a parent, I don't know what it is to be a teenager anymore. I've watched my kids. Uh, my oldest graduated high school last year. My youngest is a sophomore, almost a junior. How many months and, is he? Uh, he's uh, almost 228 months old. There you go. I knew we'd work that in there. You had but, like um, four years to it. <laughs> uh, whatever. He's, sub he's over 200 months old. <laughs> but, you know. He has had a bunch of challenges that I never faced in high school mm -hmm. as far as dealing with, with things like cyberbullying and having the world at his fingertips at his, in, a, in his freaking palm. If you remember when we were kids, a computer took up the size of a freaking warehouse. Yeah. And, and was still just yeah. a glorified calculator. Yeah. And yep. now if there's any information we want, we can look at it. We don't understand what it is to be them today. And we are partly to blame for the challenges they have today, so they are right to blame us for some of this. Let me jump in, if I may. Um, and for, Go I'm going to define that stuff before we get to because it's great conversation. I love what you're saying. I agree with it. Um, by the way, the challenges they face today were – they face these fucking challenges because we made the world cyberbullying because we invented a worldwide communication device, smartphones. Um, without this, we wouldn't have cyberbullying. So their favorite addiction is what they're bitching about. But that's a topic. Let's go back to that. Toby says, I never say or hear any of this stuff, so that's why I'm baffled. But I don't put up with emo anything coming from anyone. I agree. I do want to define a few terms, which I'm going to quick fire through these. Ooh, look at that, Elizabeth. Oh. Quick fire through these terms so we have a vague <laughs> idea of what the definition is, and then we can break the definition after that. Okay. So, current generation... <laughs> current generation, by the way, would be Generation Z, which, by the way, is a misnomer. It should be Generation 12. Generation X was the 10th generation in the U.S. That's why the X. So, Y and Z, stop it. You're wrong. Um, but there I'd are also like to state that... Hmm? I'd also like to say that technically it should be Zed. Not Z. Yeah, he's actually right. <laughs> there we go. Um, by the way, Generation Z, or 12, is 25% of the population, which is larger than uh, baby boomers or Generation X. Okay, millennials, 81 to 96. Those are the years they're born between. They're also known as the Boomerang Generation or Peter, Peter Pan Generation. Because of their perceived tendency, perceived tendency, for delaying some rites of passage into adulthood or staying home longer than the previous generations. We also have small micro generations where they're like, I'm not Gen X or Millennial. So we have these like little six year gaps where we give them their own little name, like Xenials. Or the Oregon Trail generation. I want to just come all in here. Um, and. and Desmond, just to Navy Dad, Bob, you just had to one more me do one more than me. They're in a bit war. Oh, yay, bit war! Bit war, bit war. Have they overflowed the cup yet? <laughs> so, no, not, not yet. yet. Okay, so look at them just climbing up that ladder. Okay, so real quick, yes, Sarah. I was just going to say, um, had a conversation with my older son, the almost nineteen-year-old. We were talking about labels and Gen X, Millennial, Gen Z, whatever. And he said, I, and he agreed with me, he really hates getting labeled. Mm -hmm. He's like, there's too many goddamn labels in the world. Oh, and God. why should I have yet another label? He's like, I've, I've already got a label. I'm a I've already got so many labels and I'm only 19 years old. You know, I'm a white, I'm a cis white male. I'm 19. I'm a band nerd. I'm a gamer guy. I'm a, I've got ADHD. I'm a, I have suffered from anxiety. 
why do I have to have all these things that def- that label me that make people think that they can define me by those definitions, and and that he thinks he wishes that people would just look at him and realize that he is just a human, younger and less experienced than some of us, but still. Just a person because like everybody humans else. Humans are xenophobic. We create cliques and groups. We create religions, political groups, football teams that we like better than everyone else, and we also create these labels. They allow people to have their little groups and organizations. Is it right? No. Do we love it? Well, we're still Ooh, doing it. thanks, we're Desmond. Uh, Cassidy, uh, I want you to tell this to your son. I tell this to people all the time. You're going to have to get used to how difficult it is being a smart person in a stupid world. <laughs> I tell him that fairly often. Okay. And usually shortly after that, he goes and does something completely idiotic like yeah. a lot of 19-year-old boys yeah. do. They're not done. Let's they see got- what happens if I swallow a, t- a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Uh, By the way, I saw a... Or Tide Pod. Yeah. I no. just heard him yell, I haven't done that in a while. In a while. <laughs> <laughs> For a 19-year-old, could be a month. We don't know. <laughs> um, Two days. <laughs> I, I saw a meme today where, like, a 30-something, early 30s, posted, you know what, quit calling us millennials. We're in our 30s now. We are not the ones swallowing fucking Tide Pods. But anyhow. We swallowed goldfish in my generation. Yep. Yeah. Incredible. Maybe they weren't as toxic, but still, we swallowed living... Well, I didn't, but college... Frat guys were swallowing live freaking goldfish in my generation. It's no different than eating gah. Yeah. We, <laughs> s- we sniffed mimeographs to yeah, get high. They were good. Okay, let me uh, define yeah. let me define this all the way back to the turn of the previous century. So we got Generation Z, also known as I Generation, Post Millennials, Homeland Generation. Going back, we have Millennials or Generation Y. We have Gen Xers before that. Sometimes the we're called the baby. Bust. That's my generation and most of us here as far as I know. Uh, before, What's that? 1970. There we go. Um, and, and people can dicker over when these things start and end. There's no exact. Baby boomers were previous to that, generally our parents. Silent generation, the generation before them, 25 to 42, includes some who fought in World War II. GI generation includes the generation who fought in World War II Born from the turn of the century, 1901 to 1924, coming to age during the Great Depression. Previous to that, we have the Lost Generation. Uh, generation 1942 in Europe is what they call them. And that's generally 1883 to 1900. And the only one I have before that... Nope, don't have one before that. But we can see this goes back. So we've got about seven minutes before we go into This Week in History. Um, <laughs> I can say that out loud. Elizabeth. Yes. Calamity, as in like Calamity Jane, but she's Calamity Dawn, or Sarah, either one is okay. Mom and bartender work, too. There you go. Bartender actually raises a glass. Um, and, and that's for a few others that didn't necessarily hear us in the beginning also, but it, you just called her something. But... She called me Cassidy. I know what I knew she meant me, so yeah, I wasn't gonna did. stress on it. Yeah, we all did, but I well, never stress on it. I thought me. I could call you Cassidy. It's calamity. Oh calamity. <laughs> I, I put I, I wrote to met. Ian saying her name her name, but Elizabeth has a cold, so she's a little bit off her game. Yeah, she's some got slack, a and everything, and she's still drawing As... is that a possum with a tap in its ass? What the hell is <laughs> it's it's a... a... Squirrel with a beer bottle. The beer bottle's supposed to come out of its mouth, not its ass. Whatever. Well, it makes a better shot. <laughs> no, but as as a bartender, I'm used to people not knowing my actual name and calling me all kinds of things. I've learned how to answer to pretty much anything. If I can tell it's directed towards me, I will answer it. Nice. I'm experiencing a weird phenomenon recently at the bar where I've just taken over as assistant manager because. Um, there's a guy who's mentioned a lot on our TripAdvisor reviews um, who's uh, really bubbly and really popular with the customers and really friendly to everyone. His name is Dan. Uh, and because I'm new uh, and I'm quite friendly and chatty with all the customers, I get people calling me Dan all the time. <laughs> do you look like Dan? Uh, I, don't, you I don't know. Do, you strictly do look, I look like, like a Kevin Dan? to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. I've, I'll take that as a kind of backhanded slap of a compliment. 
I like the name Kevin. It's one of my favorite names. The first guy who ever kissed me was a Kevin. No. It was a bit sloppy. We, we were 12, we get around. But you know, it yeah, works. We get around. <laughs> and besides, you could read the phone book to me with that voice of yours, and I'd be just fine. <laughs> That's why you check out that sexy Kev. Uh, it's perfect foreplay. <laughs> That's why we can people turn in shots so he'll read things or say things slow and sexy for them. Yeah, the, the I, best I, ones she were, probably doesn't know about that. The, but the best ones were in the old days uh, when people used to get me to read random stuff like adverts oh, or Bible verses. <laughs> I, I was uh, when I was in, back when my early day after I got in the army. I was just in college. Um, I took this one English class. It was a Shakespearean class. Go figure. And we had one lovely young lady who was from Liverpool, who was in my class. And she and myself and this rather flamboyant gay man named Bob were kind of the little power trio of the class. Bob? Yes. Really? Yes. Bob? Bob? We have a Bob. <laughs> Bob the no, gay guy. We have, a, we have a Bob, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he did like to Bob mm. uh, for apples or something. But his entire goal in life was to get. Chelsea to say the word fuck. Can I say that? Mm, I just yeah. said it. So yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, his entire equivalent. goal in life, the entire semester, was to say the word fuck and to say the word shit and basically any cuss word he could think of. And she was quite a proper young lady who did not like to cuss. Until finally the last day of the semester, I think just to appease Bob, she went on this profanity strewn rant <laughs> I've never seen a guy orgasm at a desk <laughs> in a community college before that day and I haven't seen that happen since well challenge accepted yeah I'm there <laughs> we can get Let a get some more rum it'll make it easier <laughs> um. speaking of saying things Kevin Bob would like you to say cannoli for 25 bits Cannoli. <laughs> you never wanted a tally patient so bad. <laughs> Something cream filled in your mouth for you, dear. You're welcome, Bob. Uh, well, I might have to go upstairs later and get that. <laughs> okay, I tell you what, let's take a break here, a refill break, and then we'll come back that with this week mean. in history. We'll be right back, everyone. That's oh, Mute that. yourselves, everyone. Sit right back and relax, or get up and get a drink and refill what you have while the cast and cohorts and co hosts of Talk the Tavern do the same. Now, here's the testimony of some of the great people we've had on Talk of the Tavern or previously on Sound of the Steam. Enjoy. This is Gail Carragher, author of The Finishing School and the Custard Protocol series, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Aiden Sivart, Steampunk Indiana Jones. <laughs> Hey, this is Scott. This is Samantha. And we're, we're Frenchy and the, the Punk. Punk. I'm Karen Kay, also known as the Fairy Lady and editor of Fay Magazine and also founder of Fairy Events. This is K.W. Jeter, author of Infernal Devices and Fiendish Schemes. Kircher here. I play Biffer in the Hobbit trilogy. And you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Trevor Crafts executive producer and creator of Lantern City. This is Lord Bobbins of Teflacon. Who's that? Steampunk Funk Bizarre here, Lord Monty, right in front of your radio. Hello, this is Professor Elemental. When I'm not taking a bath in gin or trying to invent a new kind of badger, I'm listening. Oh, yes. This is Stephen Davis of Raising Steam UK, two-day steampunk festival in Reading. Enjoy. I'm Thomas Williford of Brute Force Studios, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Commander Bob of Victor Sierra. Je suis la légendaire princesse convertie de Victor Sierra. Hi, my name is Sarah from Valentine Wolf. Hey, this is Braxton from Valentine Wolf. This is Aileen the Peacemaker, the founding editor of Beyond Victoriana, the multicultural steampunk blog. Hey, this is Joseph C.R. Vortec, otherwise known as Electro Swing Neo Vintage DJ Vortec, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. I hope you come out of it in one piece. I'm not sure I did. And don't forget about our other shows during the week. Tuesday, Middle Age Gamers on Wednesday, and Virtual International Pub VIP on Thursdays. Make sure you join us there, 1 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. 
Hi, my name is Ashley Rogers. I'm the organizer of the Copper Claw. This is Calamity Dawn, mixologist of Airship Passepartout. This is Commodore Lorpicar of Lost Saints Curiosities. This is Jimmy Diggs of the Crypto Historians, reminding you that the future is in your hands. This is Gabrielle Real. Hi, this is D. Clarence Snyder, writer of the Bright Future series, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Professor Marcus O'Bannon, the Chief Scientific Investigator for the Crypto Historians. This is Lady Gatita of Nerdvana. Hey, this is Angie Vello from Ghostfire. This is Hannah Titania, Queen of the Fairies. This is Jeff Platt of Highland Steamworks. This is Danielle Ackley McPhail, co-author of Baba Ali and the Clockwork Jin, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern Radio. Hi, this is John R. White, author of The Tales of the Airship Neverland. This is Catherine Gleason, author of Anatomy of Steampunk, The Fashion of Victorian Futurism. This is author singer Katie Cat. This is Keith Prusak of Bad September. This is Captain James Barrington of the Mighty Claxton. This is Emily Leverett, and I'm the editor of Big Bad, an Anthology of Evil, Volumes 1 and 2, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. Hola Radio Escuchas, les habla Lady Smoke de Sociedad de Steampunk Argentina y Sindicato Dieselpunk. This is Melanie Grace with Live Steamy. We are Warren and Betsy Talbot of MarriedWithLuggage.com. This is Christopher Meeker, author of Hawthorne, Chronicles of the Brass Hand. This is Mickey Wonderland, steampunk fairy princess of Wonderland with a fresh cup of Mad Hatter tea. Hi, this is Margaret McGraw, author of the prompt writing blog WritersSpark.com and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern Hello, this is Mishkin from Bird Eats Baby. This is Nim Derringer of Airship Hypatia. This is Painless Parker. This is Persephone Burroughs Dimebagger, co-captain of the Airship Hypatia. This is Psyche of Psyche Corporation. Ahoy, me darlings. This is Misty Massey, author of Mad Kestrel, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. I'm Ellie Ann from Steampunk Homes, author of Slice of Life and The Silver Sickle. Hope you enjoy the show. This is Captain Jared Cornwall of the Melanie Rose. Hi, this is Lucy Luminos with Tinker the Web Series. This is Travis Fessler, the steam-powered circus freak from the Pickled Brothers Circus. This is Scott Norman of the Wars of Other Men. I'm Mr. Cat of the Cat in Black Art, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Wendy Callahan, author of The Cronus Clock. This is Daniel Burrow, creator of Tefra, the steampunk role-playing game. Cheers and gears and good gaming. This is Tempest Wolf, actor and producer of Tinker Web Series. Tinker by name, Tinker by nature. This is Shelley Dusick, the captain of Vandalia Con, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. Did you know Talk of the Tavern also publishes books? Make sure you look us up online. We're on Amazon.com. This week in... History. Okay, Ed, what happened this week in history? Don't forget to unmute. Oops. <laughs> this week in history. Shit happened, y'all. Oh, shit. A lot of shit happened. I gotta find it. Oh, April 15th, 1947. Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in Major League Baseball by becoming, <clears throat> excuse me, Frog, the first black man to be signed to made to a major league team the brooklyn dodgers and this, go jackie this was like all over the news today in different shows and whatnot so and let me ask you how important Yo. is this day to you uh, <laughs> god negro you gotta put me on the spot don't you <laughs> bigger to baseball fans see if, to me this is something like Instead of celebrating, I'm like, is 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 a kid born, sooner? Mm-hmm. Okay, is it is a kid born in the '60s in the '60s, growing up doing desegregation and everything? Um, back then, it was probably more important to me than it is now. Right. Uh, one of the things my father used to teach me uh, when I was a young kid was it's important as a black person to see black people. Doing certain things, playing baseball. Still important. Uh, Black Panther still, is a still, great example of how it's important. Yeah, but uh, when it comes to sports, we dominate them so much now, especially baseball, <laughs> basketball, and football. So. <laughs> now we celebrate you when a white person does football. something. <laughs> so, yeah. There's a white guy playing basketball. I remember yeah. Mary Bird. Have there been any others? 
<laughs> Woody Harrelson. <laughs> no, he, uh, he jump. Yeah, he learned how to jump. <laughs> <laughs> how high? Anyhow, what else happened this week, guys? All right, I was lazy this week because I was traveling on the move, camping, blah, blah, blah. So the rest of it was just mainly pop culture. Okay. 63, 63 years ago, McDonald's. Go ahead. Uh, one thing that wasn't pop culture that happened this week, the Titanic sank. Yeah, it did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, you know, some people died. You know, that whole it, except you know, for Molly sapphire Brown. in the ocean fell to the bottom of the ocean. You know, yeah. you know stuff like that. Except for Molly Brown. She didn't die. Passed less than a mile from where I'm sat on its maiden voyage out of Southampton. Oh, cool. That's right. Hmm. And if we wanted to know more about the Titanic, I'd get my younger son because he knows all all about the Titanic, but we won't do that because that's a whole show. Well, well, well since she brought it up, we'll elaborate elaborate a little bit more. Apparently, there was an ongoing fire from the time it left dock to hitting the iceberg. What, was that, that the furnace know. that made him go forward? Uh, it, it was coal. One of the coal bins had actually caught on fire and was burning the entire time, and they thought since it was rather contained, it would be okay and they think that's what weakened the steel where the iceberg hit it and ah. caused the rupture. Yeah. Sounds sounds sound to me. We'll yeah. Never know. So anyway, sixty three years ago, McDonald's opened its first restaurant. Boo. <laughs> I'd like to tell them they opened their first drive thru. Really? It's, I think the uh, they should do a porn with hamburger and grimace together. They already have. Really? <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that, but they already have that. Does it start Tom Cruise? Because it should. <laughs> oh, thank God. Tom Cruise is a hamburger and John Goodman is a grimace. Together again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need bleach for my brain. Uh, Just 30. Plug into weirdness. Mm. Okay. 30 years ago, the movie Colors premiered, starring Sean Penn and Robert Duvall. And I know nobody really cares, but I bring that up because it's kind of cool, because Robert Duvall lives very near me in Middleburg, Virginia, and I sometimes see him. Robert Duvall is a neat guy. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy. Sean Penn, though, from what people say, is a bit of a... I don't know. That was his younger years. I don't know how he is now. No clue. Well, his brother Owen's kind of a well, I don't know. I haven't really heard anything about him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 35 years ago, Flashdance starring Jennifer Beals first premiered. She's now on a TV series called Taken, which is based kind of loosely on the movie of the same name that was starring Liam Neeson. So that's just kind of started on TV over her. here. Has anyone seen it? Is it yeah. any good? Is it worth me bothering with? Um, it's it's the atypical espionage spy. Blah blah blah. We're gonna. So it's it's watchable, but not worth going out of my way, especially for. Would that be fair? Yeah. I got okay. excited for a second there, and then disappointed because I heard Flash, and I thought Gordon, and ah. then you said Dad, and I got sad. <laughs> Flash, Flash, I love you, but we only have 14 hours to save the Earth. It's not going to take him that long to come. She's alive. Mm. Dispatch Warrock and Ajax to bring back his body. His body. <laughs> so I used to call Cletus, I used, Clytus, I used to call him, I still call him Cletus all the time. So I had a friend who did kind of a, a hick act, he dressed up as General Clytus, but because I kept calling him Cletus, he started doing his voice as like this deep deep backwards southern drawl <laughs> so he became emperor, he became uh, general cletus i think it's amusing that we keep on quoting the queen song more than the movie uh, come on the queen soundtrack made the movie what it is <laughs> it did but then again queen made a lot of things what they are because it's, yes. it's queen highlander was mm-hmm. better because of the soundtrack the only highlander that is out there is that movie there is no other highlander I don't fight anyone who tells me otherwise. There can be only one. Exactly! <laughs> only one movie starring a man who's Scottish who plays an Egyptian pretending to be a Spaniard. That's right. And sounds country. like a Russian. And sounds like a Russian. Thank you. And where's Peacock Feathers? 
<laughs> okay, what else you got? LeBron may be kicking in right now. Uh, okay. uh, 28 years ago, two snaps in a circle in living color first premiered on television. Yeah, I give it three snaps in Zorro formation. <laughs> Four snaps, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or I'm <just> kicking <laughs> I can't math. I'm an English major. <laughs> so Elizabeth's okay? Is she wandered off? She's still bed? blowing her nose. There she is. Okay. She's okay. She's, she's she a, might be sleeping. Uh, current events. Travis, you have th- somebody had something. Do I? Oh, I did have something. Andrew, you got something, though. Go ahead. It, it goes with current events and weird news. Is this what you're thinking of, Travis? I don't know. I've I've got a current event. I, I put the link in there. Okay, then. Oh. The one well, the, this they the, have this new burger. It's called a tarantula burger. No, it's no, it, it's no, you. Mm-hmm. It gets better. And it's thirty dollars. No. It, yeah, it's thirty dollars to get a chance to get one. Thirty dollars, especially for something a, called a tarantula. A lottery ticket for the chance to eat it costs thirty dollars. Yeah, and if you click on the link, you'll see a picture. I I couldn't. This morning, I'm like, because the little hairs, people put tarantula hairs, and that's what itching powder is. And I'm just thinking, oh, God, why did I look at that? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Whitehouse, good yeah. to see you, buddy. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I and hate people, so much right now. People eat weird shit. Okay, whatever. Now, but $30 they, for a hamburger because there's a tarantula on it. The restaurant in North <laughs> I'm Carolina. I'm horrified is doing this to celebrate Exotic Meat Month, where they also offer things like alligator, turtle, scorpion, Alligators, are fine! Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Silicon exotic Valley meat? Star, if I'm not on the mission, it can't be that fucking exotic. Ken, don't worry, you'll always be my favorite exotic. Amtrak train. Authorities say- so, there we go. Goddamn auto videos. Ed, Ed, Ed will always be my favorite exotic <laughs> meat. There you go. <laughs> That's a good answer. It, you guys must be... I'm assuming pretty much everyone's familiar with Gordon Ramsay, the chef. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, they're, they're, I don't know if you've ever seen this particular series over there, but there was a series Gordon Ramsay did where he traveled around India looking at Indian cuisine and spices and stuff like that. And there was one episode there where he went out with some local Indian villagers and went and caught live tarantulas and cooked them in the field because they are a local delicacy. Well, that's one thing, but to put it on, on a burger. Whole and oh. it's my worst but, nightmare. But, but I already have. Sure, I mean, that my, I know. my argument is, if you're gonna eat a tarantula, surely it's better with a tasty burger in a bun. Oh than God, just, no, like, no, 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 On no. a spit over a fire in the middle of a field. That actually, would literally be the death of But if you have a me. burger, why do you need the tarantula? <laughs> I would take <laughs> peanut butter and bacon and fried bananas on my burger any day. Thank you very much, <laughs> Fat Elvis. Kevin. There's actually Travis. a great debate amongst the people who are paying for a ticket to win a chance to eat this, whether you take the tarantula off and eat it separately, or if you squish it into your burger and then eat it like that. It's so no. you think it'd be better squishing it in. Which one of you would peel it off and eat it separately? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to talk I mean, about that. Don't start I'd, with the I'd, be, I'd probably lift off the top of the bun and like take off a leg. And give it a chew I'm first. Just my to... other vice. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'd want to get the flavor. I'd, I'd want to get the flavor of the tarantula on its own first before I take <laughs> for burgers. <laughs> I have a question for the chef, and this might be a chef scientist <laughs> question. I know they oftentimes deep fry them because they're encased in a shell, right? I don't imagine there's a lot of meat on a spider. It's probably like really liquidy, right? The body cavity's got virtually nothing to it at all. Um, and it's not so much the rich shell, but it's the, um, the <laughs> chitinous nature of their armor. I mean, you have to heat it to a high heat, right. kind of like crap. Right. I literally about? want to talk about anything else. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, like, you so crab, you might know? This for a moment. Apparently, according to people who've eaten it, um, the sack part of the spider at the back, the rear abdomen section, is a bit like sort of um, a large grape. Oh my god! Oh, so it's like an orgasm going off in your mouth when you bite oh. into it. Well, I've oh, also heard yeah, it has the texture and flavor of a mushroom. Ew, I hate <laughs> mushrooms too. 
<laughs> so it's a grain kind of shape. Oh my god! Yeah, but this one has like a little, if you look at the picture, I can't look at the picture again. No, oh, like I, I cannot. It's a bit hairs. chewy. Can you pull There's up the hairs. legs? I just oh. imagine pulling off the legs and eating like this. <laughs> uh, where is it? But I have eaten a lot of things in my life. On purpose and accident. Um, <laughs> yes, both. Um, thanks to my, my varied tr- world globe trotting military related background. But oh my god. I would rather eat Dorian fruit infused I would rather drink Dorian fruit Dorian fruit infused malort. Easy for you to say. Then eat a tarantula burger. No, that wasn't easy. <laughs> I'll skip the sarcasm and go straight to the literal thing. Can we talk about something other than spiders? Because oh, they wait, 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 Ian, Ian says with enough beer I'll almost probably eat almost anything. Said, tell me what I ate the next day, please. <laughs> okay. So um a few other comments. Skipper has a BS in animal science. In my field, one plus one equals three or more. Talking to, he says, not for a million dollars would I eat that. Elizabeth, did you have one final <laughs> comment before I go on with the next article? Yeah, where is it? In the Twitch stream. Oh, in the Twitch stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the restaurants in North Carolina. No, 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 the uh, link. Ah. Uh, you find uh, it. You. Ah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, a, I'm arachnophobic, big time. I don't think I could do it, unless they're going to put money on the table. I don't think I could do it for big money. Oh, really? Spiders, no, really, since spiders tried to kill me once, I don't <laughs> think I could do it. Well, I, maybe this is a message to them, right? That's right. They're not going to mess with you <laughs> ever since, you ever, since, ever since that thing that with the spiders, no. No, I, I give them their space. I let them go do their spider business so long as they don't intrude on me. Okay, so okay. next article. Last Wednesday, T.J. Miller, who has starred as the bartender in Deadpool, the lead in the Emoji movie, and a few other things that you've probably not seen, um, he was arrested for calling in alleged fake bomb threat. And yes, <laughs> he was drunk when he did it. And he did it at LaGuardia Airport in Queens. That idea. Doesn't really surprise me. <laughs> Please! <laughs> there when that happens. Now, <laughs> the reason he did it. Um, he, he called and said there was a woman who had a bomb in her bag. And apparently, uh, yeah, when the uh, investigator called Miller back, according to the DOJ press release, he gave a different description of the woman. But he claimed that the woman kept checking her bag without taking anything out, kept asking the first-class attendant what the next stop was, seemed to want to get off the train and leave her bag behind. He was traveling on Amtrak when he did this. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, – I read somewhere. It's not in this article, but I think he had some kind of connection to the woman or interaction with her at least. So he was kind of annoyed at her. He was swatting. He, he was what? Well, they do – <clears throat> they do say on all the trains and subways, they always say, if you see something, say something. Right. And that's a big push. So he did say something. He did. He got in trouble for it? Yeah. That'll teach him to save lives or not. Or not. Well, teach he, was probably, he was probably, he was probably, well, he said he was drunk. So he's probably like, yeah, it's a bomb. Instead of saying, there's a suspicious woman with a, you know. That's true. <laughs> Big package. Okay, Ed, what else you got this week, buddy? Um, the okay, we're we're into deaths, and I wasn't sure whether to put this in weird news or deaths. But um, April fourteenth, never heard of the guy, but David Buckle. He was an LGBT rights lawyer and an environmental activist. Buckle's body was found by a passerby in Brooklyn's Prospect Park. It appeared as if he had burned himself to death. Next to his body was a note in a manila envelope marked to the police. The text of the note, which also was emailed to the New York Times, stated, 
Most humans of the planet now breathe air made of unhe- made unhealthy by fossil fuels, and many die early deaths as a result. My early death by fossil fuel reflects what we are doing to ourselves. I wonder how many seconds into that self-immolation he went, maybe this was a bad idea. Also, isn't he just contributing to the problem? <laughs> <laughs> As you read this, you'll be sucking up bits of me. <laughs> I, for one, welcome my ashy overlords. <laughs> Look, I have Japanese cat. Nice. Do they have bugs in them? No, no, no. no. Oh. One of them is called ice cream, and the other one is an orange creamsicle. Oh, that cat. sounds good. If you don't know, in Ohio, there's this place called Jungle Gems. Yeah, I've been there. The international marketplace. It's worth coming to Ohio just to go there. There's even a British section for Kevin. Yeah, yeah. There's an American British, section British, over British at Kevin's people, store. I, British I've heard that a lot of uh, um, Americans... It's a touchy subject right now. Why? Oh, no. Duh, yeah. Brexit. Oh. Good old Brexit. Mm. So, Sarah... Don't get me stuck. That also is another show. <laughs> sure it is. Well, we went to visit I'd Kevin. like to discuss that with you later at length. Mm-hmm. That, that's kind of what happens when you redeem a Kev rant. Mm. <laughs> oh, um, Sir Skipper just drunkenly redeemed dad joke. <laughs> Did you hear about the cheese factory that exploded in France? It was nothing oh, God, left no. but debris. Ah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So, so anyhow, um, when we were in the UK, they had an Where American today section. And put it tomorrow. That's right. And Andrea was very tickled by the American section in the UK. Do you want to tell them what you found in the American section? Um, there was like marshmallow fluff. Yeah. Fruit Loops. Oh, God. Peanut butter. What was it? Fruit Loops, Pop Tarts, Marshmallow Fluff. Yeah. These were our representatives. I I have heard from various people who live abroad or who have traveled abroad that the American section at most of those, at most grocery stores abroad, feature our junk food. Yes. Yeah. yeah. True story. It was so funny. Constantly amazed in equal measure by the Americans' insatiable and unrequited lust for either a British accent, and any British accent apparently, even even a simplified, countrified farmer like me, or chocolate, British chocolate. I blame Doctor Who. Yeah. I do. I I totally blame Doctor Who. Doctor Who is the only reason I'm an Anglophile. I watched that show when I was five, apparently, with my parents, when John Pertwee was around. And I refused to watch the new Doctor Who at first because I didn't think they could possibly do a show that was anything remotely like what I knew and loved. So finally, I decided to give it a try and was instantly hooked. I blame Doctor Who. If it weren't for that, I wouldn't give a shit about England. Your chocolate has a lot more chocolate in it. Or a That's lot why. Less corn syrup. And a lot it's really good. Syrup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it I wanted like to get a cat cream egg from England, mm-hmm. but they stopped selling them at Jungle Gems. Mm-hmm. The actual English yeah. Cadbury cream eggs. Um, for some reason, they stopped selling at Jungle Gems. So I've never been able to have an actual English Cadbury cream egg, which remains to this day a particular. It's like number two on my bucket list. Okay, right. Well, since this is Talk of the Tavern and we like to make people's dreams come true, if you want to send me through Travis an address or somewhere safe I can send it to, I will do my utmost to mail you some proper British Cabinet streaming. I am sending him my address right now. <laughs> Kevin? Yeah, Kevin does this. He oh, sends we'll, me paprika we'll make- Pringles and club bark. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mean, already. You are now and, my favorite person in the world. I'm already Andrew and Travis's British snack pimp, so I might as well expand the stable. Yes. If you could throw in a bag of real jelly babies and some jammy dodgers, I would <laughs> so, tell you. Send me a list, but uh, you can pass on that. It's, we'll, we'll work out something instead. But 
<clears throat> so, Ed, who else is dead? Okay, as Sarah had mentioned <laughs> earlier, Say Harry what? Anderson. Mm-hmm. Harry, Harry Anderson of Night Court. Um, also, Ian pointed out earlier, apparently jazz great Mel Torme passed away today. Because he's in oh, hand oh, with oh. Harry Anderson. Yeah. Got him yeah. crushed! Yeah. <laughs> I just got the message from her. <laughs> and more. She's adding more to the grocery list. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I will forward yes. that shortly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yesterday, April 15th, actor R. Lee Emery, a.k.a. The Gunny, made famous from the movie Full Metal Jacket, mm-hmm. passed away at the age yeah. of 74. Um, everybody remembers him as The Gunny. He was actually in the Marine Corps. He served 10 years during the Vietnam era. Uh, he never made the rank of Gunny. He was actually just a staff sergeant, though he was a drill instructor. He was made a honorary gunner, gunnery sergeant by the Commandant of the Marine Corps in 2002. <clears throat> and Travis mentioned something about talking about his music. I guess you were referring to the rap song? Yes? No? Or did I misunderstand? Totally misunderstood. Uh, he did music? Uh, oh, yeah. They made a little <laughs> rap song of him back back when, back when in 87, 88 years when he, did, after a full metal jacket. Where he did was, they do uh, a song about smelling napalm in the morning? <laughs> Different movie, Robert Duvall. Oh, that's <laughs> my apologies. Maybe they could do a duo, but not now. Take my pop culture card. <laughs> but at the request at the request of Ian, Ian requested that we could do a moment of silence for the goodie, and I'd like to take that one step further. We will call the hot toddies to attention, and we will play taps for the goodie, and then have a short toast afterwards. So, hot toddies. Oh, okay. oh. I'm going to bring the show down for a second. Don't mean to, but I'm going to bring the show down for a second. So last year, uh, almost a year ago in June, my mom passed away. She'd been in poor health, but this particular incident was fairly sudden nonetheless. I had to fly out to Sacramento. We didn't have a funeral for her per se, but I remember both of my parents were military vets. Uh, Vietnam era. And they'd said to me once that at their funeral, they wanted me to play taps for them because I used to play the trumpet. I honestly don't think I could have done it. But I have a son who plays trumpet better than I ever even, better than I did at my best. And he could do it. So later on, I might have him play taps for me. Well, here's your parents. Here's the Lee and the memory of them. Yep. Rest Cheers. Cheers. And by the way, that rendition of Taps was directly from the United States Army Band. Want to give them? I was going to ask about that. Yeah, I found it on archive.org, free download. We actually have an actual military-style bugle in the house, along with a French horn, and several trumpets, and a flugelhorn. I also want to mention one more person who passed last week on the 14th. Our good friend Tara Moeller, who's been on the show, and I wrote a book and did a card game with her. And Mo, her daughter, um, their mother slash grandmother passed away on Saturday after a long struggle, but got five years more than they expected. So uh, here's to the passing that brings relief along with the grief. Cheers. 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 So. Hey, might I add? 
death fucking sucks. Oh, I'm glad it happens. Otherwise, all those annoying people would still be around. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> pros and cons. Pros and cons. Lies the pros question of balances. Yeah. Okay, what about birthdays? Uh, April 15th, 1452, painter, scientist, visionary, and all-around cool dude, Leonardo da Vinci. Happy birthday, Leonardo. Hey, yeah, Leo. <laughs> Yay, science! He was my favorite turtle. Your favorite turtle. <laughs> 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 a fucking awesome guy. <laughs> uh, April 15th, 1997, Macy Williams from Game of Thrones. Happy birthday, Macy. She's Yay, adorable. best character on the show. Yeah. April 16th, 1965, comedian, actor, Martin Lawrence. <laughs> Didn't we talk about him last week? He's selling those hats. I don't know. I wasn't here. Oh. Wait, was he the black guy or the short guy? The yes. black short guy. The black short guy? Okay, I got it. Yeah. There's the guy in Bad Boys. <laughs> okay, yeah, I got him. He was also... April 18th. He played Martin on the Martin Lawrence show. Martin! Martin! <laughs> Go on, Ed. April 18th, 1953, actor Rick Moranis from Space Boys, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the original Ghostbusters, and on and on and on and on. And he left acting for a solidly legitimate reason. Oh, yeah. Great. So he can raise fucking kids. Yeah. At least it wasn't a woman. Oh, his wife died, so he went to raise, so he left acting to raise his kids. Huh. April, April 20th, 1889, author Adolf Hitler was born. Definitely an influencer. They should have let him in art school. Author Adolf Hitler? Yes, Mein Kampf, the book that started it all. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I'm just questioning the fact that that's the only label just, they went with. It's like introducing hey, 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 famous that's vegetarian the label, Adolf Hitler. That's the label I went with. We'll see if anybody else knows. <laughs> <laughs> April twentieth. <laughs> I mean, after all, it's we didn't start the fire, so we'll see if they know who actually did. <laughs> April twentieth, nineteen thirty-seven. Actor George Takai. Oh Yay! my! Man, don't catch me, okay? Oh my! Yeah. Oh my! April twentieth, twenty-first. We need him on the show. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. That's why I called his little fucking ass out. <laughs> <laughs> April 21st, 1926, Elizabeth Aunt Alexander May Windsor, a.k.a. Queen Elizabeth II of England. Happy birthday, go, Your Majesty. Go Happy love birthday. your mom. <laughs> and I think she's listening. She's been sending me messages, having problems trying to get into Twitch. Um, but a dear, dear... Are we still talking about Queen Elizabeth here? No, 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 no. <laughs> I know she's not listening. It's past her bedtime. Yeah. She's got better things to do, the uh, unelected German sponger. But uh, uh, anyway, a dear, dear friend of mine, the incredibly amazing and lovely Daniel Mahan. Happy birthday, Daniel. Happy Miss you, birthday, sweetie. Daniel. Daniel, Happy birthday. You, you might want to do two things. First of all, check your email after signing up for Twitch and make sure you didn't get a verification email that you have to click on. Secondly, follow the channel, otherwise you can't type on it. Those two things may help you out. Um, it's been sound issues. Uh, she's uh, trying to listen on her phone and it's Brent. So gotcha, okay. Uh, a couple of other birthdays here. Um, for me, I believe I mentioned last week, but yesterday was Sean Durrington, artist and really all-around good guy. Um, somebody else who had a brush with death who decided to live his dream instead of work like a dog, and he's doing pretty well with it, so good for him. And then Radio Real creator and the force behind a large bit of the steampunk music drive, Gabrielle Real has a birthday this Saturday where she is turning hey, 49. Yeah, that's right. We love you, Gabby. Here's to you. We'll go with tequila for her. Oh. For her, I'm giving gin. Mm-hmm. You're like me. You've got like seven different Jet, damn drinks. <laughs> um, that's all I have since I, you know, like weeded out so many Facebook people. Um, and by the way, Ed I'd, wants to say something. Oh, Ed, yeah. Uh, were you getting ready to mention Michael Whitehouse's? I was going to go through a couple of those things, going all the way okay, back go ahead. to the talking go ahead. Tony. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Going back to the snack thing, Kevin, she says, my last snack mm -hmm. food package from Japan was open for inspection, and some of it was eaten. Mm -hmm. Government jerks. Ian yeah, Kevin, I commented on that. 
mm-hmm. I said that snack inspection should be uh, snack interference should be punishable by death. Frankly, death by chocolate. <clears throat> um, Absolutely. No death by. Like, do you guys have Rivita? Like a dry cracker bread diet biscuit thing. It's essentially just bran and cardboard mashed no, together us, into a. No, but us Jews have matzah. <laughs> It's dry, like the sense of humor. Uh, Ian says, Travis, that one fellow on the whiskey vault, Daniel, I think, tells dad jokes to irritate other guys. Uh, the other guy, Rex. That's cool. We should get him on the show, too. <laughs> um, that's that's another, I believe, a podcast that Ian listens to who he recommended to me. So I love those jokes, and nobody else has complained. Um, I like dad jokes. It's I did a whole book of them, 201 of the worst dad jokes. You're welcome. It's it's available down below and behind under the screen. You can see. There's a, mm-hmm. a guy knocked on my front door earlier collecting for the local old people's home, so I gave him my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> Ian also says Art Bell of Coast to Coast AM fame also yeah. passed on Friday the thirteenth. I think we've all heard that name yeah. and not actually know who he is. Um, I like the show. I listen to it. They play it. They still play it. And Ed, do you? I really feel it's better if you or or Sarah reads Michael's comment. <laughs> oh, wait, I have to get back there. To that comment, uh, so. Michael Whitehouse says Adolf Hitler was also an industrial organizational innovator. This this is true. That's right. That's not, was, true. not an incorrect fact. <laughs> and he was also a freaking artist. Apparently, he painted. Yes. Yes. And if Matter of fact, the whole art thing is part of why he had so much angst. Because <laughs> he didn't get in. Because he said he sucked at it. They wouldn't let him in. Have you seen Preacher? Season two. Uh, I have not seen. Season two of Preacher. It covers it. You know, he admitted uh, it was because of him, the VW bug came around. Yeah, Volkswagen. The, yeah, the car of the people. Well, Rocket, was actually the whole invention of marketing. So. Yeah, and if it weren't for Adolf, we would have had the movie Schindler's List. Yeah. Movie, true. Genocide. True. You know, he didn't kill the most of all the debacle, de- diabolical leaders. Forgive me, I'm getting tired. Oh, he just killed the diabolical Jews. <laughs> <laughs> and the gays, and the gypsies. And the black. And a lot of Catholics, I love that lot. one line from To Be or Not To Be, the Mel Brooks movie. Where they're like, oh, uh, the one person says he's collecting Jews, gays, and blacks. And Mel Brooks says, if he kills all of them, we'll have no more showbiz. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> you know, Blazing Saddles probably could not get made today. Yeah, it Hell, can. most of all Quentin Brooks Tarantino. could not get made today. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino is our new Mel Brooks without the comedy. I had somebody tell me that they hated racism. They hated racist jokes of any kind. But they loved Mel Brooks movies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to respond to that particular statement, so I just started singing this song from Blazing Saddles about hands on your hips and push out your hips. <laughs> oh, Bob, oh, Bob, oh, Bob, oh, Bob, oh, Bob. Oh, Bob. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, what great joke. Exactly. Oh. oh, is that the easy oh. makeup up for kids comment? <laughs> yeah. I actually think that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that joke is Jew approved. It's coming from the I'm Jew. This Jew approved. I tell you what, as we're I'm getting going to hell. For Wait a minute, Jews don't believe in hell. I'm safe. <laughs> um, and by the I way, I may also be something. As we're going back into the topic, I'm going to play another song that allows us to really put the blame where it belongs. So here we go with that. Times have changed. Our kids are getting worse. They won't obey their parents. They just want to fight and curse. Should we blame the government or blame society? Or should we blame the images on TV? No. But now when I see him, he tells me to fuck myself. Well, play in Canada. Play in Canada. It seems that everything's gone wrong since Canada came along. Play in Canada. Play in Canada. They're not even a real country anyway. My son could have been a doctor or a lawyer, it's a true. Say he burned a flock of piggy on a barbecue. Should we blame the matches? Should we blame the fire? Or the doctors who allow it to expire? And 
here's to South Park and their horrible, horrible, beautiful sense of humor. Hey, Actually, hey. Mm-hmm. I have I have a thought and a comment. No and it has to do with the recent no. jokes about Adolf and the Jews and ovens and the like. And it's recently, I saw an article, Facebook link kind of thing, about how something like 46% of young Americans don't actually know much about the Holocaust. Yes. Um, now, we all know that those articles about statistics, because, you know, 85% of stories about statistics are made up on the spot. That being said, they're talking about the fading memory of the Holocaust and how a lot of, young, a lot of people in the current generation think that the number of Jews and others that were killed is far less than the actual amount of number of people that were killed by this regime, by this, this idealism, by this zealotry. And I remember growing up, one thing that was drilled into my head as a young Jew was never forget. Because, and the old adage or maxim goes, those who, are for, those who forget the fa- past are doomed to repeat it. And I find myself wondering about that. As the horrors of the Holocaust have faded significantly since I was a child. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, as, as, as a child, me... My direct family, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, they emigrated to the United States before World War II. But several members of my extended family were still in there and were in Dachau and in Krakow and other such places during this. And and a good chunk of my family tree was actually eradicated during this time. But yet the younger generation doesn't feel the – they weren't raised to feel the emphasis on this particular historical event as I was. Hang on a second. I have to mute for a second. Okay. <laughs> Elizabeth tearing up the place. <laughs> you can do it. Sorry, I had to deal with the child on a sensitive subject for just a moment. Masturbating in the shower? So good. No, for something the children. Um, but I had a point I was trying to make here which is that certain things in our past have become <laughs> muted over the years uh-huh. and in this case the holocaust for example the generation growing up isn't being taught it the way I was being taught it which in one hand is good because there was a significant amount of trauma involved with me Right. I did I ever tell childhood. you about Oh my gosh, so here's a story, and you might find this kind of outrageous like I did. I was in the 6th grade, 7th grade, 7th grade. I was in Texas. I was the only Jewish student in a school of 400 kids in Killeen, Texas. And possibly in all of Texas. Possibly in all of Texas. This is (laughs) quite probably true. So there I was, this one Jewish kid in social studies in the 7th grade. We were discussing Kristallnacht. But before we actually got into the meat of the subject, my teacher brought up the date. And she looked right at me and said, Sarah, stand up. And I stood up. She goes, tell me what is the significance of this date? And I got that deer in the headlights look. And I looked at her and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she said, you should know this date. I'm like, I don't know this date. I do not know what you're talking about. And the more I professed my ignorance, the more and more she berated me. And by berate, I mean she insulted me in a way which today would go viral and cause a teacher to lose her entire career over. It's not too late. Eventually, (laughs) eventually it came out. Eventually she said, it's freaking crystal knock, you stupid, stupid girl. You're Jewish. How could you not know this date? I didn't know this date at that point in time because my parents felt I was too sensitive a young child to be exposed to the knowledge of what happened during the Holocaust at that point in time. They were waiting till I was a little older, a little more mature, to introduce me to this concept in such a way that they thought I could emotionally handle. And yet this teacher, who felt that because I was Jewish, somehow I had this innate knowledge of what happened, felt it appropriate to berate me in a class of my peer in front of my class of my peers that I did not have this knowledge already. No, Sarah. And that is how I was introduced to the Holocaust. <clears throat> now you mentioned the term crystal knock. Am I saying that correctly? Close enough. Okay. 
you want to expand on what exactly that is? Because as much as I know about the Holocaust and the different events, that one particular term does not hold anything for me. Hang on. Let me uh, look up words that will be better than mine. <laughs> Which I can read some comments while you do that. Um, let's see. Yeah. Here. By the way, Navy Dad, who gladly claims his 0.04% black heritage, also says, I am with her. I am 0.01% Jewish. I will not forget. Um, exactly. Crystal Knox, by the way, I found this. Yes. On um, November 9th through 10th, 1938, these, uh, the... Um, the stormtroopers, the German stormtroopers, the paramilitary forces, and German civilians also, um, they basically went around breaking into the, – the term comes from the shards of broken grass that littered the streets after the windows of Jewish-owned stores and buildings and synagogues were, were, were destroyed – by basically hordes of the stormtroopers and German civilians. It's sort of what began – it was the incident that sort of really brought out into the public mind the idea of the cleansing, as Adolf Hitler would have said, of the Jewish race. The inciting incident this is sort of, of genocide. What, basically, yes. This was the night that the pogroms all began. Gotcha. It had been going on before that, but this was the most dramatic event as they went smashing windows of Jewish businesses, dragging Jewish people out into the... I mean, I don't really want to go into the horrors no, that no, no, no. went on. We all know that what happened in World War II to the Jews and to the Catholics and to the gays and to the Romani and to a whole slew of other people. I, I, even though no. the Jews were the primary target, I don't want to take Let, away from the impact it had on other people. Let me bring this into yeah. a larger picture here. And I'm going to read you. two comments. Please here. do. Um, Michael says, Dan Carlin had some very interesting comments on his podcast on the genocide of the Gauls. The idea was that at the time, 2,000 years ago, it was a very emotional story, but 2,000 years later, it's forgotten historical afterthought. And now, he also says, my favorite thing to do on December 7th is to ask people who remembers why the date will live in infamy. About half the people... It's my birthday! Well, oh my god, it. he is so right! And yes, Ed, that... Thank you, courtroom. That is an infamous date because, you know. By the way, let me but he's a right. quick shout out to courtroom here, who is another Twitch streamer who has come to join us. He's out of Scotland and does kind of war gaming type stuff, from what I caught at least. So, just, Hey, man. You just like him because he likes your mustache. Well, that too. But, you know, I watch his <laughs> show a bit and glad to see him pop over here and hang out too. Um, but yet, what my question here is the concepts of what happened in history are very important are the specifics as important to to recall? For example, you not knowing that date as a child or this gall thing. Um, yes, it's important to know human beings can do horrible things to other human beings. And there is a, a, a bloody trail of these throughout history. Uh, we can look at what a white guys did to Native Americans or... Uh, we could talk about slavery. We could bring all kinds of things in here. Yeah. <coughs> the Japanese British internment Commonwealth. camps. Right. Uh. The Japanese internment camps. Yeah. The colonization of India. Right. Mm -hmm. So we could go on and on about what we have done. Although I've noticed a theme of white people doing all this. No. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's completely uh, 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 irrelevant no, to the. No. That's not germane. That is no. not germane. Hold on. One second, Ed, Sarah, Elizabeth. Um. What's important, I'll agree with the atrocity of, of choosing people and what you do to them, is being done now to Christians all over the Middle East. And I people agree with that. don't care. They're beheading people. Uh, the gays, they're pushing them off roofs. People are being burned alive. People are, I mean, it's still continuing to this day. And I think uh, your teacher was wrong in what she did. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, a horrible experience. Yeah, it's, you know, when we... Well, just... I years, still love teachers. Forget. Even after all that, I still love teachers. You know, ten years ago, yeah. we had the, the genocide of, I believe it was the Serbs. Um, Ed, you had something else to add to what Sarah was saying before we pop back over there. Well, well here's the thing. As Sarah referenced, um, the exact quote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And Travis, uh, I think you even commented on that. Mm -hmm. I put it on my page earlier in reference to the to people not remembering 
uh, the Holocaust. And I, I, I think, as a black man, and many black people in America today are going to disagree with me, the important thing is to remember these things happen so that we don't repeat them again. Whichever but it example doesn't def- you use. Whichever example you use. But it doesn't define who I am today. I well, like that. So, yeah, I don't want to get too much into – and, Sarah, I'm not going to cut you off. You get to say what you're going to say. Oh, but, no, yeah, no, I don't no – I just don't want to track the whole show in that direction at this point because I want to get back to the actual topic. But what else do you have to say there, Sarah? Well, first I was going to say that today in China, for example, there is a small, relatively secretive group of Chinese Jews. And they still, to this day, in 2018 – in their homeland, have to practice their Judaism in extreme secretism for fear of being punishable by death by the Chinese government. And it's not just Jewish people. Don't get... I, I've been told that, oh, you're just Jews, so you focus on Jewish people. No, it's not just the Jewish people who were prosec- who were persecuted. It's... Long story short, it is horrific how we try to, as, and by we I mean humanity, try to quash groups simply because they do not believe as we do. And I really think that's what it all boils down we to. We didn't start the fire, but we still have it going. We, and we, can we still have it going. Exactly. And we, we still, still have, have to going. fight it. Right. And we're feeding that fucking fire today, man. Mm. Oh, I don't even want to get started about <laughs> Okay, so, so I have a son with special needs. Mm-hmm. My younger son, Sprocket too, has autism. And when, on election night, when the as the results were coming in, I was working at my previous job, not the one I'm at now, but my previous job, which was on a military installation at an officer's club. And as such, all the TVs were put on the uh, election, even though I really didn't want them there. When I got home at 2 o'clock in the morning, my son with autism was still up watching election coverage on his phone. Because he was terrified. This poor kid, I kept him home the day after the election was over because this poor kid was so convinced that with our current leadership coming into power, that his life was essentially over. Mm-hmm. It's been over a year since the inauguration. And I'm still having to deal with the fallout of that particular scenario with this young man. He is 16 and a half years old, and he is more terrified for this future than I've seen. He doesn't want to get a job because he's afraid if he is made – because he's afraid if he, get a, if he gets a job, he'll be forced to leave my home. And if he leaves my home, I won't be able to protect him. And if I won't be able to protect him, his life is essentially over. You know, and that is what I've been dealing with on a daily basis but- in our – Current climate. This is not new. When we saw interracial marriage, lives were going to be over. Some lives were ended because of that. Um, we still run into that. We do. To this and, day, and, we still run into that problem. And that's what. Well, go ahead, Andrea. I was going to say, over the weekend, <laughs> we went to see a movie. We saw The Post. Um, I don't know if you guys, guys have seen it. Pretty good movie. Um, it, it's a. Yeah, it's about the Washington Post. It had Tom Hanks. Really good movie. Um, But we discussed it. And we look at the movie and the things that were true to that generation. That wouldn't happen now. Like the struggle of women. Before you couldn't be in a position of power. And now women can. So going along with the interracial. There's always been a struggle. There will always be a struggle. Kevin, do you want to say what you typed? Do you want to read that out loud? Yes, please do. Yeah. Uh, I just put that I think gender. I, I won't read it word for word. That's I'll it. say what I just put there. Yeah. But Ramble on. I think there's a big focus these days, especially in the way things are portrayed to you in the media. So they're, we're almost encouraged to try and segregate each other by color, by creed, rather than by the simple fact that what that person is doing is either right 
or wrong. wrong. It's got nothing to do with the color of the skin they were born into. It's to do with the choices they've made in the consciousness of their brain. Yeah. And that's irrelevant to whether they have three arms, seven dicks, or nine eyes. It, that's, you know, they've, they've got, uh, that's about as much relevance as whether they're white, black, Asian, or whatever. We should be judging each other as a collective humanity on whether we're behaving well or not, not on where we came from. Yeah, I don't. If you're, if you're a piece of shit, I don't care if you have corn in you. A- Amen, brother. There Put it right have, there. Put have, it right there. Give me have. some. Give me some. Give me some. Now, there. To, to follow up on that. Yeah. And again, I'm going to speak for the. Uh, I'm going to speak for the generation following me, mainly my older son, who has a lot to say on these matters. The one who doesn't like doesn't like labels and wants us to be judged on our merits our individual merits and not on the fact that he happens to be born at a specific time and happens to be a specific color and happens to identify as a specific gender as, that he was assigned to at birth he really wishes and i think most people of this upcoming generation his age I and mean, we're talking post millennial here the younger generation want to be judged on their own merits. They don't want to be judged by specific labels. They don't want to be judged by any preconceived notions. And I think we as the older generations would be doing ourselves a service if we could just do that. If we could just accept them on their own individual merits, accept them as the idea that these are a group of human beings and to accept the idea that maybe they can actually figure out what they're doing and do a better job than we've been doing. If I can interrupt real quick. <clears throat> courtroom, you have a Bye, great night, buddy. Tomorrow, we have night, a uh, BB Black Dog, Dale Rolls, out of the UK on, and it's from 1 to 4 our time, so it's much more <clears throat> your time type thing. And I'll raid you if you're on afterwards, so I'll see you then. But also keep in mind our weekly shows, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, are more convenient for you. This is just our late night U.S. one, so um, more convenient for me. Which I'm hoping to get Kevin on oh, once in a while. You're doing a great job, Kevin. Champion. This is why we don't expect a lot like out of him because he shows up at one in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, I'm tipsy. Well. Von Hegner, you out too? I'm almost as bad as he is. <laughs> oh, we losing Von Hegner. Good night, Ed. He said good night, all. So. Um, good night. Uh, good night. <laughs> Kevin says sleepily. <laughs> So to tie this all back, this relates to Elizabeth. Yes. Okay, uh, I agree. Uh, my quick rant is uh, that's how I was raised. Ignore what people say. Watch what they do. Uh, don't hang out with garbage. Eventually, you start to stink. For people who complain regarding, you know, you did this, and now it's a uh, fine. That's sophomoric. That's childish. It's also a distraction for your ego. Also for the what religion. are you doing to change the world? Yeah. What are you doing? Because you know what? It wasn't perfect when I got here either. And I like to leave places better than I found it. And that's the sacrifice of every generation. And it can be little things. Like, are you polite and kind to people? Do you help someone out when they need it? To grander things. And we've talked on that on the show a little bit about that, of what people are doing. It's what the show's but all when about. You find it's what we're doing. Depression, Extend yourself. Try to change something for the better. Even Sarah. if it's just picking the garbage in front of your house. Give it a shot. Sarah? Even if our generation, even if the current generation, I should say, is spending all their times on their phone, which they're not, by the way, and later on I can talk about my bar and how I see that idea of being glued to your telephone is coming to a lie, if you will. But Sorry, I digress. Even if our current generation seems to be cued in on something that maybe some of us don't quite understand, we must not forget that it's our generation and our parents' generation, by us, I mean the Gen X and the generation that preceded us, that are the ones who brought into being devices that are capable of destroying the entire world. The internet may be out there now, but it's our generation, the generation that preceded us, that brought the freaking nuclear missile into fruition thanks adolf i'm i'm more thinking <laughs> as much as i love einstein and science think about it einstein has a huge huge price tag attached to his head a legacy. when it comes to a legacy a legacy that he is not what well, was not because you know obviously he's dead 
but a, a legacy that the man was not really proud of. If it weren't for Einstein, if it uh-huh. weren't for some of our great geniuses in the generations that preceded even us, the Gen X generation, we, the generation of our parents were the ones who created the ability to destroy the world with mm-hmm. a push of a button. Mm-hmm. That's progress. That's progress. <laughs> yes, Ed? <laughs> Go ahead, Ed. I can see you chewing on something. Bring yeah, it. because... Oh, okay. Don't get me wrong. I, I, thousands of people being wiped out by Red nuclear bomb, at, yeah. atomic bomb is a, is a bad thing, okay? It, really, don't. really bad thing. But is that a thing of a too much of a bad thing? After all, okay, when Truman dropped the two atomic bombs on Japan, it ended that war. If it's if he had not done that, that war would have gone on for who knows how long and how many more thousands of American lives would be lost to end Least that American war. Lives. Yes. Now, yes. Well, on the one hand, as an American, I agree with that. On um, one part of me agrees with the idea of preserving American lives. Because I am American and I am invested in the lives of my American neighbors. On the other hand, they created the freaking nuclear missile, which enough countries own now to where if everybody launched everything, life as we know it is completely eradicated. Oh, absolutely. Not this is really a fact. That's why I'm saying, is it just too much of a bad thing? The road to hell. Say yeah. <laughs> quick, on. quick thought on. Wait, quick everybody, thought on that. Everybody, hold your thought and listen carefully. Yeah. Time for the roll call for our late night, inappropriate, slightly intoxicated, and very shit. We're there already. We are. This is where the faint of heart <laughs> swoon. Parents put children to bed, and things heat up and get steamy. So pour another drink and strap yourself in. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. So, Kevin, you could go on. And we do have quite a few comments from the group here. But, Kevin, did you I want was to- just going to make a quick point with regard to the nuclear bomb thing. And I, get, I totally get the point you're trying to make. But when the British invented the longbow, it destroyed the world of, of the French and the Spanish at the time mm-hmm. because no one could match them in the midfield for that. When the first cannon was invented, infantry were pretty much annihilated uh, when the Japanese samurai met Europeans with guns for the first time and it was swords and, you know, these are all examples the, the nuclear bomb thing is horrendous it's the worst example ever of it because of the massive horrendous scale of destruction mm-hmm. and not just that but the lingering damage afterwards it's undeniably mm-hmm. the, the most mm-hmm. potentially evil weapon humanity has ever created but it's just another extreme example of how Mankind constantly seeks to develop new and interesting ways to fuck each other over rather than help okay. each other. Oh, yeah. We're so good a, at a point to make here is, okay, so when when armor-piercing pre- arrows were created against that to counteract plate mail, mm. when a lot of these things were – when armor-piercing bullets were, pre- were created to pierce through those – the hide of the tanks in World War I – or World War Two, rather, sorry, tanks, World War Two. When those kinds of things were done, when those kinds of things were created, they were relatively self-contained. Nuclear weapons that we created, and I could even go so far as to say as white people created, right. but I won't, but I just did. <laughs> so, <laughs> nuclear weapons were really above and beyond anything else we've created, were created Yes, it stopped okay. the. It, it helped stop the World War II. But here's the thing: the effect was so much more. Sorry, Travis. I'll get to my point. I swear to God. I promise. I'll get to my point. The effect went beyond stopping our enemy, and into a crea- into an effect that not just affected our enemy, but affected the entire right. world We're around us. We're changing our tail in this conversation now. Yes. So let me bring it around to I, this, and, and that's why I made that statement how, because you will. How do we go from here? What do we do now is the question, as opposed to, yes, we can look at they did, we did, this happened. We can't answer them. Hold on. I got comments to read. Hold on. 
And actually, maybe okay. we can't. Maybe we can't. You're probably right, but I'd like to think. Uh, <laughs> there is a few comments that we kind of covered with the longbow where Michael says, when I was your age, I had to get up and walk across the room to get my sword and wipe out a city. <laughs> now you damn kids can blow up the city with the push of a button. Um, then, then Great I, comment. I think he's feeding the fire here. Don't answer this one yet, you peoples. Uh, he says, but seriously, <laughs> nuclear weapons have been responsible for the longest period of relative peace in history. And that might be feeding the fire. Bob says, launch him and let God sort him out. Um, is it really peace or is it fear? We'll go back to that. <laughs> um, oh, see, talking to Howie points out, I used to be a warrior like you until I took a nuclear missile to the knee. Um, <laughs> which I counter with not only one person takes a nuclear missile to the knee because <laughs> of fallout of that nuclear missile affects the entire everybody's knee. No, yeah, exactly. I mean, worldwide. Um, so you know what I'm looking at here is yes, he, this is what we have. This is what we live in now, Andrea. I just want to say it's okay as long as the nuclear missile doesn't take a knee at a football game. <laughs> what bravo, Andrea, bravo. <laughs> I bow to you. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I want to get out. Um, and thank you, Mike. I have Mike. nowhere to go from there. I really don't. That that was so just it. What do we do instead of looking at the previous generations? And by the way, I do have a whole little thing that I want to go into, but I don't want to interrupt with a very spicy conversation. Um. But I might, if you guys will give I, me a chance. Hmm? I have a thought, and then I will let go you ahead, go. go let you, no, you're doing great. You were having a good time. Go on. We, we, we here, because we're all relatively close to the same age, right? We here don't do anything. It is really in the hands of the, those that we are raising behind us. But we have to guide them. We got to leave them. You first. have to guide them. We got to leave. But them. I also think we're hindering them with our expectations and our millennial this or millennial that are the current generation this the current generation that at some point in time we have to take faith in the idea that we have raised them to the best of our ability give up the reins of power well, didn't and our let society have that same people. shit put on us with you punk rockers and the previous one you and hippies and, the, wait, I and that damn ale was Presley I'm going back yeah, and you, eventually you, they you let research. go and Except then for also two, you jazz people in the 20s and 30s, and you technological you people with your, but, with, with your Andrew, team. such a hypocrite. We would have had Elvis Presley if it wasn't for that damn black slave music. I know. Hey, I like that black slave music. Exactly. Oh, by the way, exactly. sir, I wanted to point out you're really not giving enough credit to the black people. I saw... Um, the movie with the three women creating the better rocket engine. Blacks helped us make the weapon even better. <laughs> I'm, not giving them a, I'm giving all the credit to everyone. <laughs> oh, let's see if I'm enough. giving the idea that even though my son is only 19 years old and he still needs a lot of guidance, I am willing to put a lot of my trust and faith in him. And as crappy as the situation is, maybe to drop at his feet. He is the one who's going to make the world a better or worse place. And at some point in time, we just let them do it. Look, we're all in What, do you 40s. want to say something, Sammy? My son's staring at me like he wants to say something, but he won't say anything because he's shy. In our, We're in our 40s or 50s. We still have another good 30 to 40 years worth of influencing this planet we're on. What do we do with our next Maybe 30 more. Oh, look at Stan Lee and Betty White. There we go. Which Stan Lee and Betty White, as much as I love them, they're part of the previous generation, and it's time to let go. But they're still influencing. Yes, so. they are still influencing. Although, and I'd like may to I say that the whole situation with Stan Lee is completely tragic right now. Mm -hmm. Which situation? And I hope that Kevin Smith can get him to live with him, because I think Kevin Smith would take better care of him. Yeah, might be. <laughs> That's another thing we could talk about, you know, taking care of our elders and how that has changed over the past 40 years. Yeah, how mm -hmm. people look at it as a burden and not as, as a burden and as a, and as a... Yeah, it's a burden to a lot of people today. But it shouldn't be. Uh, Michael, you've got your fact wrong. Millennials, that's Gen Xers you just described. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That is uh, millennials, basically mid-80s. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Yeah, the millennials, if you will, they're adults now. They're in their 30s. 
um, the new generation beyond them, what you call Gen Z, if you want to throw labels. Uh, but the bottom line is, what do we do? Label or no label, we still are living. We can still make a difference, a positive one. So I don't feel – now, Sarah, yeah, I for agree. A while. We are grooming our children to make a better world, but we still have to lead that way. We still influence them, and frankly, our elders still control the decision-making machine. The generation before us is the one that runs the government. Our Have you ever thought of mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, at 50 years old, I am that generation that's running the government. So it's you, Ed. Damn it. <laughs> that's you, Ed. <laughs> Have you, do, it, do all of you, do any of you remember Logan's run? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you hit 30, you're basically killed. Mm -hmm. I don't... Definitely do not prescribe to the idea that anyone of the age of 50 gets killed because I kind of like living and I'm almost 50. <laughs> but maybe we should I don't know, do a better job of now, include them. If I can interject at this point, I live, and you may not know this because I have a chance to explain this earlier, but I live on a small island off the south coast of the UK called the Isle of Wight. And the Isle of Wight, uh, to very briefly stereotype it, is essentially like uh, Florida in the US in the sense that it's where old people go to die. Um, Florida and Arizona. And so there is a large part of the population of the Isle of Wight who are over retirement age, or at least over the age of 60, 65, much more so here on the island uh, than anywhere else in the UK. So our demographic is a bit tilted that way. And so I would be quite happy of uh, being in favour of euthanasia of people over a certain age. Welcome to the carousel. And they are largely responsible for the, the, all the jokes in the UK about us being stuck in a weird time bubble, which has never escaped the 1950s, you know, as well as all of the uh, jokes about us having relations with our cousins and six toes and stuff, which is lovely. Do you have six toes, Kevin? No, I don't. No, I have seven. I do. I have, I have ten toes. Oh, I see. Okay. So Bugley <laughs> says I was an idiot in Always a teacher. 20s. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying you are currently 20, so I was welcoming you. Um, you know what? I was like, you're in the 20s. How old is he? Huh? I know 40-year-olds who are idiots. I know 70-year-olds who are fucking idiots. It, it, right? Then I know 16-year-olds that have such heart, hope, and intelligence lacking experience. But it, it, there's some in every generation on each side, and they're the minority on each side. Then there's this middle in the mass that just goes along like sheep. Andrea? I was waiting for you to finish your thought, but I, I kind of want to agree with Toei. It says, I'd rather be killed than ruled by younger people who eat Tide Pods and snort condoms. I want to address... There's instructions on the wrapper people. I, I want to I want to talk about the condom thing. When we were kids, as a matter of fact, for hundreds, if not thousands of years before that, people would take a piece of string, snort it in, pull it out their mouth, and then they'd get a job at the circus and the freak show, later putting nails in their nose and stuff like that. This is not something new. It's just a different thing they're using. Um, it's just showing our needs. But they're not happening. getting jobs at the circus. <laughs> Maybe or being mules for cocaine, so you know that's because we killed the circus. That's true, Ed. Here's the thing about the condom thing, though. It's not new. It's actually something that was going around in like 2007 or something like that. And a Texas school board decided to bring it up at a school board meeting, warning parents <laughs> that kids can be doing it. So of course now it's hit social media, and guess what? Mm -hmm. Kids are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah. When I was in the ninth grade, when I was in the ninth grade, this was back in 1984. There was this huge thing at my high school, and it was uh, sent out in a, in a letter that was actually printed and mailed because we didn't have the internet yet. About how school kids were huffing or huffing glue in paper bags, right. and this was this became a huge epidemic. To be honest, at my school, one. I, I knew like two kids who did it in a school of 400. It was something that somebody figured out and decided to turn into an epidemic when it really wasn't an epidemic. Well, sometimes Not just that. Yes, people with there enough was a Tide news behind thing. them makes it an epidemic. epidemic. We're talking about kids and Tide Pods today. 
-hmm. And we've seen some YouTube videos. There are a plethora of YouTube videos of kids, uh, kids, quote unquote, eating or ingesting or smoking uh, uh, Tide Pods. But personally, and I do know a lot of teenagers because I have teenage sons and I'm still in touch with like my 16 year old, despite his special needs, I still know a lot of his peers and I'm in touch with a lot of his peers. I can honestly tell you that probably not a single child in my my son's school of almost 400 kids has tried to ingest a Tide Pod. It's something that the internet that that's part of the internet thing. It is. Is it's, it's yeah, blown up things. something attention yeah. that itty bitty percentage that is doing it suddenly seems like an epidemic when it's exactly a handful of people. And let's see, what did Buggy say there? Um, to you, Ed, some things I did. Okay, but I think the fact that people forget what they were doing in their 20s also. We were uh, figuring like, ourselves, lives and future out, and making mistakes doing it. By the way, Buggy is Danielle. Hi, Danielle! Happy birthday, Danielle. Hi, happy birthday. No, happy birthday. But, but that's what I like to say about that. You, you know, mistakes. I just want to say, um, maybe Dad, Bob, we had no doubt. Yeah, we had no doubt. No doubt. We Making mistakes in our 20s or even as teenagers or at any age, it's a part of growing. The, the important thing is to realize we made a mistake and, oh, shit, I'm not going to do that again. Right? It's when you, you do the same thing over and over and over again that, we, oh, you're a fucking which, idiot. Which is the definition of stupidity. Repeating Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and Elizabeth wants to comment after this. I would, I'd like to go back to the previous comment about stepping aside and let the younger generation First, uh, I, you don't get something as a gift in this world. You have to earn it. Mm. And the fact that children have been given so much without consequence, I think, is part of the problem right now. Okay. Well, maybe. Two. Hang on. Hang okay, on. I'll wait. I'll wait. There's there more to go back I'm on. waiting. I'm waiting. Go the ahead. The other thing is, uh, when I was in Smithfield, Virginia, I was part of my Rotary Club. I was even president of my Rotary Club. 90 to percent, 95% of our members were all 60 and above. Mm -hmm. And some of them would come to meetings when, even when they got hit with ALS, they'd be in wheelchairs, they would come and they were making huge differences in this tiny little community. It's not about age. We have to get past that. It's about activity. It's about commitment. I see my job as a teacher I don't just go to school with my teacher. I am always a teacher. I am a mentor. When I'm drinking or out with friends, I don't post pictures on my Facebook page. Yeah, uh-uh, because I'm a teacher. And that's my job, is to help students. And I tell all of my students, not only do I teach them, they teach me. Mm-hmm. And that's how it works. And as long as we keep that going, then life will be better. That's First off, story. may I say Elizabeth? Yeah. I love you. Oh, I wish. Are you gonna give me a temporary egg? <laughs> no, there's no butt in there. I I love you and I love your with, attitude and I wish I could hang out with you, in a personal basis. With that love, right. Navy Dad says preach at Elizabeth and Michael says hello fellow Rotarian. Okay, go on, Sarah. Hey, so, there is a lot to say about trying to gather my thoughts here. Okay, so there's a lot to say about experience. It is it is inarguable that we. And the generation before us have a lot of experience living. Sure. Now, the life that we lived was in a certain, and I'm going to bring technology, in a mm-hmm. certain technological environment. Good answer. Mm-hmm. And our technological environment shaped a whole lot of how we relate to things. Today's, today's technological environment is the environment that I was reading about in speculative science fiction in the 80s. Yeah. We're watching in the 60s on Star Trek. But right. Sort of. That being said, <laughs> Elizabeth is absolutely right about activism, about the people who are getting out there and doing in their wheelchairs, whether they have ALS or not. The or people who are trying to make... with autism. Exactly. Yeah. Whether they're 16 with autism, autism and are complete and total coaster enthusiasts like my son. Yeah. Now, that's roller they, coaster, not like drink coaster, right? Yes, absolutely. My son is a huge theme park addict. It's He's turned me into one. It's not even funny. Nice. <laughs> but 
if there was a way, what I would like to see, my ideal, I'm, I'm thinking idealistically here, okay? Idealistically, what I, what I would like to see personally is where we can take our experiences and the experiences of our people older than us and give that to that younger generation. Say, this is our knowledge of the world as we have lived it. Take this, apply it to what you are learning with today's technology, and bring us into the future. And I don't think we'll ever see anything like that until we can get rid of the labels. Until And it's not just us. It's them, and it's the people before us, and it's us having to somehow... I guess what I'm boiling it down to is we're too damn ethnocentric. We're too damn egocentric. We you know, can't get outside of ourselves. It, it, it sounds like between the Logan's Run and this, a, a radical idea, but a concept that you might be open to, is a cutoff for adulting. So basically a point in time where as a certain age, whether that's 40, 60, 90, or whatever, we go, we're done. You need something, come to us. We're going to go over here and have a good time, and good luck with everything. But exactly. Exactly. Think about it this way. We have a certain amount of childhood that we are allowed to have where people go, oh, you're just a kid. You can get away with X. And then there's a certain point when they go, from here on out, you are expected to be responsible. What, what age is then that? Then you get to I a point. That defined. We have to figure out those ages. And, you know. But that was at some point in time, I mean, think about Stanley. Think about Stanley. For example, uh -huh. he's 96 years old. Stanley right now, and I admit we all know he's going through some interesting, and by interesting I mean possibly traumatic and difficult things in his particular life right now. But Stanley is held at a certain esteem and a certain age that he could, I mean, my mama is 75 years old. You're, are you muted? <laughs> oh crap, I okay. hit the mute by Last accident. Term, my mother is 75 years old. Go. My mother is 75 years old. And at her age, she is given a certain allowance for certain behavioral quirks, if you will. Yes. Like I know I have a cust I had a customer at my old my old profession and later on when we get talking about booze, I'll tell you about my new bar. But at my previous bar, I had this customer who was an octogenarian. He was 87 years old. And because he was 87 years old, because he had fought in more than one war, and we won't get into definition of war here, okay. but because he was a military member for X amount of years, and he was 87 years old, when he said and did certain things, he was given a pass because he was that old. Just like when my kid was before, when my kid was younger than 10, when they found out he had autism, he was given a pass for certain behaviors. Oh, he's 10 years old. He shouldn't be doing X. Oh, wait, he's autistic. That's fine. You know, I, I have to apologize. I actually literally ADHD brain here literally you completely lost my train of thought. I'm just wondering, <laughs> should we get a pass on certain behaviors no matter what age we are? No. I think I agree with that. I think we should always be able to be called out on it, no matter what wage, no matter what age, and no matter what disability we may or may not have. And Elizabeth? We should, yeah. What? Calamity? I'm sorry, I completely <laughs> lost my train of thought. Okay. Is saying about that, Joseph Campbell would have a lot a strong response to that idea. The guy with and the And it's the detrimental of societies. We don't allow children to go off on a, a walkabout or a spiritual journey or we've taken away these rites of passage to where they have to earn something. They have to prove that they're an adult. You know, go out and live for a season on your own. Come back. And I'm not sure what the answer is. Uh, I really believe in things like um, service organizations, martial arts, things where there's clear-cut advancements of behavior. And uh, I couldn't agree with her more. But you got to earn it. You don't just you get it. it. You got to earn it. Now, okay, I'm about to bring a pop culture and thing into this. Sweet. You remember when Pokemon was introduced, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in Pokemon, when you were 10 years old, you were given, you were sent to the professor 
to get your first Pokemon. You got your Pokemon, and at 10 years old, you were allowed to go travel the world looking for... (laughs) Fuck you, Elizabeth. (laughs) But in Pokemon, at 10 years old, you were released into the world to go traveling around the world searching for little critters. And when you went around this world, people didn't really fuck with you. Now, hold on one second. Ed, you know what Pokemon is from this description so far, right? I, I've kind of heard of it, but okay. I don't know what the it's, fuck it's it is. It's like short for pocket monsters. This is a game cartoon. I can't imagine series. somebody who doesn't know what Pokemon is. <clears throat> well, I just I didn't want him to think yeah. there's actually people releasing their ten year olds to travel the world. No, no, no. Oh no, I didn't. You know, I, I just I just had better things to do than play this imaginary game where I'm traveling the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> It's out there doing it. Mm-hmm. Anime. <laughs> so, For all your parallel, go on. You know, in the anime Pokemon, basically the way the world was set up when you were ten years old, you got your Pokemon from the professor at the Pokemon Center. At that point, you were released into the wild. So, at the tender age of ten, you were released, and you would wander around the countryside looking for critters to here's, create to catch your modern research. Pokemon. Here's what we're giving our 10-year-olds to explore the world with now. I, My husband and I used to t- talk about our ideal utopia. Mm-hmm. Utopia is the Pokemon universe. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Think about the worst crimes that happen in that cartoon. The outfits? The, the, the animation? The, <laughs> the animation, yes. I'm talking about the anime. <laughs> The worst, the worst things in the world were fairly easily defeated. These kids were allowed to wander around the entire world. They would go to places, and people would go, "Oh, you're hunting Pokemon. Here's a room. Here's some food. Here's some clothes. Here's some things you need. Don't worry about paying me for them. Just go out and do what you need to do to learn." Pokemon is utopia. Think about that. Yeah. Jin may be having a lot to do with my thought processes right now. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the reality of that. When we talk about we didn't start the fire, though, okay, um, I think I'm probably, Elizabeth may be close to my age, but at 53 years old, I think I'm probably the oldest one here. I'm 48, almost 48. So the Mayberry effect, okay? When I was a kid running around, okay, people could let their children loose to travel the fucking neighborhood and didn't have to worry about a thing. Right. You can't Same do enough. you can't do that today in today's no. America. Well, that's what I'm going to this. This is our Pokemon. We hand a 10-year-old this and they explore it virtually and there are still dangers from people. Sarah, I love the idea of living in a utopia, but we don't because there's fucking people here. We don't. And our children become the prey to predators with a cell phone alone, let alone. But I agree. The passage, uh, the, the parallel you're drawing of they're, they're given a tool. They're sent out to see what they can learn, find, do to make it a better place. And there are comments here, by the way. Um, Des says you got to travel the world and participate in imaginary dogfights, a description of Pokemon. Talking Toe, he says, no, that's hell. Michael Whitehouse says, most 10-year-olds, if they were given the autonomy to adventure, could rise to the challenge. But when 20-year-olds are treated like children, they act like it. Um, <laughs> you uh, know, uh, mm-hmm. I, uh, I agree with that. In my yeah. class... <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting the worse flies, worse. anybody? <laughs> There's a few words that kids learn today, because... I correct them when they say, I ain't got nothing in my bag. I say, well, you have something in your bag, or or, I ain't got nothing. The words they learned today is uh, forlorn. And I would ask them, why do you look so forlorn? And then they would, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, The bane of my existence. (laughs) I told this one girl to go tell her mother that. (laughs) Uh, There was another one I can't remember. But it's absolutely imperative, you know. In my class, it is yes, sir, no, ma'am, thank you. Multisyllabic words, different definitions, and correct grammar. Only way to roll. You treat people like children or thugs, they're going to act like I would, if you were, if my children were in the third grade, I would be thrilled to have have you be their teacher. (laughs) (laughs) No. Then I teach him how to do body shots. (laughs) It's almost 1030. Yes, I'm taking control for a moment here. Sarah. 
you were brought on yes. so you could do your 20 minute topic with us, which normally we don't <laughs> even bring the person on. We just talk about it, but we are enjoying a very interesting conversation. So it's it 1030. Do we want to wrap it up with final thoughts and talk about alcohol for the next 30 minutes? Or do we want to just carry on your choice? You're the guest. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm no I'm, I'm conflicted. I, I am conflicted. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I, on the one hand, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I don't think we're going to solve it. But you know, I think <laughs> ultimately, yeah, as as the person who who requested a specific topic, even though I'm enjoying the current topic, mm-hmm. I really don't think we're going to get very far with it. No, no, we're running. A I think in some ways we have very similar thoughts. I agree, and I. I think we'll just keep going in circles. So I think after a break, we should talk about booze. Okay. We'll do a qu- Everybody need a break? Absolutely. I'm going to put on the refill video, guys, but we might cut it short if we all get back here in, in, in a short amount of time than five minutes. So we'll Sounds good. I could use a coffee. And discuss like the booze. Sit right back and relax or get up and get a drink and refill what you have while the cast and cohorts and co-hosts of Talk the Tavern do the same. Now here's the testimony from some of the great Son of a bitch! Enjoy. This is Gail Carragher, author of The Finishing School and the Custard Protocol series, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Aiden Sivart, steampunk Indiana Jones. <laughs> Hey, this is Scott. This is Samantha. And we're We're Frenchy and the the Punk. I'm Karen Kay, also known as the Fairy Lady and editor of Fame Magazine and also founder of Fairy Events. This is K.W. Jeter, author of Infernal Devices and Fiendish Schemes. Kircher here. I play Biffer in the Hobbit trilogy. And you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Trevor Crafts, executive producer and creator of Lantern City. This is Lord Bobbins of Teflacon. Who's that? Steampunk Funk Bizarre here, Lord Monty, right in front of your radio. Hello, this is Professor Elemental. When I'm not taking a bath in gin or trying to invent a new kind of badger, I'm listening. Oh, yes. This is Stephen Davis of Raising Steam UK, two day steampunk festival in Reading. Enjoy. I'm Thomas Williford of Brute Force Studios, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Commander Bob of Victor Sierra. Je suis la légendaire princesse convertie de Victor Sierra. Hi, my name is Sarah from Valentine Wolf. Hey, this is Braxton from Valentine Wolf. This is Aileen the Peacemaker, the founding editor of Beyond Victoriana, the multicultural steampunk blog. Hey, this is Joseph C.R. Vortech, otherwise known as Electro Swing Neo Vintage DJ Vortech, and you're listening to Talk of the Tavern. I hope you come out of it in one piece. I'm not sure I did. And don't forget about our other shows during the week. Tuesday, Middle Age Gamers on Wednesday, and Virtual International Pub VIP on Thursday. Make sure you join us there, 1 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Hi, my name is Ashley Rogers. I'm the organizer of the Copper Claw. This is Calamity Dawn, mixologist of Airship Passepartout. This is Commodore Lorpicar of Lost Saints Curiosities. This is Jimmy Diggs of the Crypto Historians, reminding you that the future is in your hands. This is Gabrielle Real. Hi, this is D. Clarence Snyder, writer of the Bright Future series, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern. This is Professor Marcus O'Bannon, the Chief Scientific Investigator for the Crypto Historians. This is Lady Gatita of Nerdvana. Hey, this is Angie Vello from Ghostfire. This is Hannah Titania, Queen of the Fairies. This is Jeff Platt of Highland Steamworks. This is Danielle Ackley McPhail, co-author of Baba Ali and the Clockwork Jin, and you are listening to Talk of the Tavern Radio. Hi, this is John R. White, author of The Tales of the Airship Neverland. This is Catherine Gleason, author of Anatomy of Steampunk, The Fashion of Victorian Futurism. This is opera singer Katie Cat. This is Keith Prusak of Bad September. This is Captain James Barrington of The Mighty Claxton. This is Emily Leverett, and I'm the editor of The Big Bad Damn, and Anthology wasn't the last. Cool, Volumes 1 and 2, and you are listening to <laughs> Talk of the Tavern. Well, we got enough of us. Let's start. Elizabeth can jump in afterwards. Here, I'm going to make her view big so everybody out there can see what she's drawing so far. So I like the port. I, I do Why too. have I not been part of this more often? 
Well, now you know, <laughs> right? So, right? I've uh, listened. I've listened a few times. I haven't commented. After the show, well, now you know how to get on Twitch. And after the show, we, we could talk about the future after the show. I think she needs to put a Pokeball on there. I'm going to say that. <laughs> I think she does. I've been playing Pokeball, Pokemon Go for at least half the show. Have you really? Oh, that's great. It's I quit playing a while ago. Okay. I still love playing it. They started this whole new thing with research. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a whole new aspect to the game that makes the game more interesting to play. I'm curious how the Ghostbusters game will be, which is just like Pokemon, but Ghostbusters. I hadn't heard about this. I need this in my life. <laughs> it's uh, Okay, so let's shift this the main over. Reason I, mm -hmm. I was going to say the main reason I wanted, I wanted to shift focus is I want to talk about my bar. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna. Here comes Elizabeth now. Once she settles in, we'll get on to the topic of alcohol, bars, whatever. Is yeah. There. there we go. Okay, she's close enough to hear it. Let's go. Sarah, you, <clears throat> you supported us on Kickstarter at the level where I you did. Get to choose a 20 minute topic, but we know you, we like you. We went, just come on the show and we'll talk about that for 20 minutes sometime during the show. We've got about 20 I'm so minutes grateful. left. <laughs> And then we do I am the so grateful. Uh, you were you were great so far. I mean, you maybe you'll be a horror now. We'll see. <laughs> the night I, I will done. try not to be a horror. <laughs> so because you know, all I really want to talk about is booze. It ultimately, is. so uh, especially with all these reports coming out where they actually did research all the way back to 1960, and they're like, "Oh wait, alcohol's bad for you." And I'm like, "Really? It took oh, a report." Oh please, bitch! <laughs> a, Thank you, science. We didn't know. <laughs> Alcohol is, I mean, anything is bad for you when taken out of context and taken to excess. Ed? Alcohol in moderation is not bad for you. Yes, Ed? Before we get too deep into this, hey, you 15 people that are still on here, that glass, that damn tip glass is not full. Get busy, motherfuckers. Okay. What the hell? Come on, yeah. Said. I mean, don't get me wrong. We appreciate the bits you've thrown so far, okay. but this is not going to be the first week you are not going to fill that glass, surely. We need bits. We need bits. Okay. <laughs> Throw a so five ring, guys. You can either... Okay, I don't know if you guys know about bits. If you go into the chat, there'll be a little triangle. Click on it. You can go to get bits. You can either pay money or watch videos to give us bits. And then if you drop more than... A hundred in one thing, in other words, when you cheer, type out 100 instead of five or whatever, it will make the glass splash and explode bits everywhere. That's actually pretty freaking cool. Talking Toey says millennials took all my bits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start from the beginning here since this is my topic okay, for 20 minutes. Ahead. All right. I'm Sarah, also known as Calamity Dawn. Mm -hmm. As Calamity Dawn, I'm part of Calamity Labs. I'm co-founder and senior member of Calamity Labs. You we know, are a steampunk group. You know you're in our uh, refill video. You're in there. Awesome! So anyhow. I'm psyched. <laughs> go on. But anyway, as Calamity, ba Calamity Labs, we are steampunk bartenders. We go to various <laughs> conventions and we talk about how to set up home wet bars, wet bars how to make your cocktails, and basically how to make better drinks for a better time, which is our official tagline. Nice. But I am also Sarah, and I work at, uh, if you can see this label on my shirt, it's called D20. If you ever find yourself in Ohio, the Dayton area, Thanks, there's, a little bar called D yeah, there's a little bar called D20, a bar for characters. We are a gaming bar. Mm. We have no TVs. We have no music. What we do have are over 400 different kinds of board games and card games and no library fee. So you're welcome to go to our game catalog, our card catalog, and just pick a game and play it. We have 20 different beers on tap, ranging where we have a mead and a, and a cider always on tap and 18 different beer varieties on tap. We also have two sodas, non-alcoholic, on tap. We have a full-service bar of cocktails. All of our cocktails are created in-house. So myself and my managers, we all come up with different drinks to make to put on the menu. You can come to our bar. You can play games. You can drink booze. The only thing we don't have is food. But we are delivery friendly, and we even occasionally have food trucks come and park in our parking lot for you to go get food from. Nice. 
awesome place in Kettering, Ohio, D20. Find us on now, Facebook. Now, you're saying your bar. By my bar, I mean the bar I work at. Okay, I do just not checking. own this bar. I do not manage this bar. Okay, just check it. Pride and ownership. Pride and ownership. <laughs> Hell yeah. I being a bartender at this bar. The owners are Andrew and Christine Sparks. They're also on Facebook. So I've got if a, anybody wants to two opening Ed, questions. Ed's got a point, though. Sorry, I'm just going to say this okay. real quick. Ed, Ed's got a point. My first ever boss when I uh, first bought my own bar, I uh, bought my first pub at the age of 26. And the guy who advised me, who'd been in the trade for years, um, he said to me that, uh, do you know, I've just done exactly the same thing as you. I've just lost my stream of consciousness. forgot what I was going to say. Sorry, Interrupt when you get it again. <laughs> Sarah, okay. yeah, I'll get it in a minute. Of all, do you know the ring? It's catching tonight. Yeah, it's, it's we're D20, a bar with characters on Facebook. Okay, let's... I let's. mean... That, we don't have an actual website page. We just have the Facebook. Okay, hold on. It's sorry. called A Bar with Character. D20, A Bar with Characters. Andrew, right. can you find that on Facebook? Post a link, yeah. please. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Thank you, you Andrea. I, sorry, I remember what I was going to say, ahead, uh, which was the, yeah, my first ever boss. He said to me, basically, you can't sell it if you don't own it. So, yeah, it's right. You know, that's what he's going on about, about pride in the business. You know, you've mm -hmm. got to love the place that you work and you you own it before you can sell it to somebody else. If you own it, then you can sell it. So, Sarah, what's your I favorite just, drink to make? Yes. And your check least favorite. <laughs> My what favorite you, drinks to make? Wait, two questions. Do you mean yes. as a bartender or as a personal drinker? When you're at work. <laughs> well, we could go into all of it, but also it's a two-part question. Favorite drink to make okay. and least favorite drink to make. Okay, my favorite drink to make is probably Manhattan. Okay, you want to it's tell us simple. what's in it? Manhattan is, at its core, Manhattan is two ounces of bourbon or rye, mm -hmm. spirits, I mean, sorry, bourbon or rye, bitters, and sweet vermouth. Okay. That's all that's in there. So why is that a favorite? It's a favorite because it is a drink that, although the core recipe is very simple, it allows for tremendous amounts of variation, uh -huh. especially when it comes to the bitters, because I, for example, love to make my own bitters. It's a kind of a relatively new hobby of mine is making bitters, and the bitters can change the entire atmosphere of a Manhattan. It is also important to take into account the kind of sweet vermouth you use. Most people in the United States, and I preface that by saying in the United States – tend to go to the grocery store and buy martini and raw sea vermouth dry and sweet that is basically your bottom of the barrel well vermouth it is a decent vermouth but it is not the best vermouth there is um, by the Carpano company there's mm -hmm. Antica Formula Carpano vermouth <laughs> that is like king of vermouths that makes a difference the other thing that makes a difference in a, in a Manhattan is the proportions. Traditionally, you have a two to one ratio, two parts rye or two parts rye or bourbon to two part uh, to one part vermouth mm -hmm. and a couple of dashes of bitters. But that can be subject to a lot of personal interpretation. Personally, I'm not a huge vermouth fan, so I tend to do two parts vermouth, a, a sorry, two parts whiskey to a splash of vermouth. And a couple of couple of dashes of bitters. My go-to when I go to a new bar is to order a Manhattan. And I want to order their house Manhattan. I want to see how they make their Manhattan. That gives me a good feel of how good the bar is. Mm -hmm. So that's why Manhattan is one of my favorite cocktails to make. Is because although it is a very simple recipe... It allows for some really interesting personal expansions. Very good. And, and you favorite? can probably the mojito. Now, mind <laughs> you, I preface this with saying I love a good mojito. Oh yeah, fresh There's stuff in nothing there. Nothing more mm -hmm. than a, exactly right. There's yeah. nothing more I love on a good summer, hot summer night. Fresh mint, fresh to lime. Drinking a mojito, fresh mint, fresh lime, good rum. I love a mojito. I hate making them, but only for one reason, and that is because as a commercial bartender, 
mojitos take a certain extra amount of time to make. Right. And when you're ten deep at the bar, a ten deep at the bar, the last thing you want to hear is "I want a mojito," because then you're like, "Frick, I got to muddle mint leaves. I got to get some freaking sugar." Hang on a second. I want a podcast, Loki. Come here. Come here. No, come here. Everybody, I want to briefly introduce you to my. You know, I talked earlier about the people in my uh, the millennials in my basement. Right. This is one of them. This is Loki. He's hey. a hard work motherfucker. Okay, so he didn't look Mexican. <laughs> well, he's just a midget, not a wetback. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wait a minute. He's not a midget. He's actually six inches too tall to be legally a midget. And he's very proud of those six inches. But illegally, he can. They always are. No, but seriously, I hate making mojitos. <laughs> but here's the thing. And aside from the fact that everybody who's listening to this now knows I hate making them, if somebody orders a mojito from me, I will smile and I will make them the fucking mojito. Because at the core of it, as a professional bartender, the best drink I can make is the drink you want to drink. Ed? Um, I have relatives in Dayton, Ohio. Just wait until I come up there and visit them next time. You're going to oh, be geez, making them either. Oh, jeez. Come see. <laughs> That's the best you've ever had. Or old-fashioned. I can't make you a mojito because we don't actually have fresh mint at my bar. That's mm. the other reason I hate mojitos. is because mint has a very short lifespan. Mm. And if you buy fresh mint, thinking, I've got mint for a week's worth of mojitos, and then nobody comes in and order mojitos, you have a week, week's worth of fucking spoiled mint. So, Andrew, That's I wonder if we could do a road trip there and do a live broadcast. If you came to my bar, I would be able to guarantee you an interview with my owners, and you would have a great time. I promise you, if you could come to Dayton and come to my bar, you would have a great time. And that includes you, Kevin, who's got your ra hand raised. Thank you. If, have you got a windowsill somewhere in your bar that gets bright sunlight during the day at some point? Absolutely, we do. Get a pot, put some mint with some good roots in it, and use tomato food on it, and water it sparingly, just enough to keep it alive, and it'll grow like an absolute bastard. You just pick off little bits fresh every day. If you just take a few leaves at a time you can, and get a couple of them going, you can keep a fresh supply of mint going. I will talk to my bosses about that and see if they'd just be you, willing to let me yeah, do it. You get like a concentrated uh, food for growing things like tomatoes and stuff. Most garden centers will sell it like a baby bio or I don't know what the American version is, but <laughs> miracle <laughs> grow or something. Oh. You know. Yeah, You'd have you to know, make it stop it's, snowing and freaking – did you know it snowed today here in Ohio? It snowed. <laughs> We're dropping below freezing it's here snowed. in Virginia tonight. <laughs> yeah. After it's 80 snowed. degrees it's on Friday and Saturday. Season and it snowed. So what's your um, go-to drink and then what's your – a favorite drink that's not a go-to drink, just like I want this crazy thing, even if it's not okay. crazy. Now, there's a couple of different answers to this question, to be honest. My uh -huh. first go-to drink when I get off work, I've often been asked, you're a bartender, what do you drink when you get off work and you go home? Honestly, what I drink when I get off work and I come home is a couple of fingers of bourbon mm -hmm. or gin. I literally just pour bourbon in a glass and I drink the shit out, drink that. Mm -hmm. because the last thing I want to do when I've finished working is make a fucking cocktail. Right. <laughs> no, but seriously, when I go to a bar, my go-to drink is usually a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned. Okay, and you want to define, really tell us what's in an Old Fashioned real quick. Old Fashioned, <laughs> at its core, is nothing more than your spirits, bitters, sugar, and water, okay. or club soda, depending on your preference. I prefer water. And when you say spirits... Is there a certain spirits I mean, that are better? Bourbon, Thank you, Bob. Bourbon, whiskey, rye, tequila, spirits. Go, oh, Bob. You can make an old-fashioned. Do you get your spirits from the Ghostbusters? <laughs> Is that why you want the no, game on I, your phone? <laughs> I don't want to be possessed. I just want to have mm. a fucking cocktail. There's a sign in the gents' toilets that says, never cross the streams. Never cross the streams. <laughs> no, but generally, when I drink an old-fashioned, I usually order bourbon. <laughs> Um, when I go to a bar, most bars in my area, when it comes to bourbon, we're talking um, Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Maker's Mark. Those are pretty much on almost every bar. Mm -hmm. um, usually when I go for an old-fashioned, I want something like um, 
I'll take Jack Daniels. I'll take um, Booker's or Woodford Reserve. Woodford's, Woodford Reserve. Dog, dog. Yeah, baby. I've been drinking a little gin tonight. I can be allowed to be a little slurry <laughs> in my speech. No, you're okay. But, <laughs> but generally speaking, I like a good bourbon or rye in my old-fashioned. I like a little bit of sugar, and I like good bitters. Well. I don't I'll take the Angostura if that is literally the only thing you have, which is the most common bitters you'll find. But please, you will make me so happy if you have a homemade, a house-made bitters on hand. And I prefer mine with a little splash of water versus a splash of the club soda. A lot of times when you go to bars today, your old fashions will have a muddled orange and cherry with your sugar and bitters. That's by when I say modern, I mean like 1920s. The traditional bitters didn't have the orange and cherry in it. Gotcha. I don't mind if you put the orange and cherry as my garnish, but I don't need it muddled into my old fashioned. That makes I a totally also, different drink, doesn't it? I mean, traditionally, honestly, the original bitters were nothing more, like I said, than spirits, bitters, sugar, and water. Another thing I will measure a bar by is a martini. Okay. One thing about martini drinkers. <laughs> real quote unquote real martini drinkers will tell you exactly what they want when they order it. For example, when I order a martini, I will tell you I want a Hendrix extra dry martini up with a dash of orange bitters. Whoa. And that tells the bartender exactly what they need to know to make the martini. Well first thing it tells them is you know what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> So somebody, not up. somebody comes up and says, I want a martini. They don't know exactly what they want. They probably haven't drunk a lot of martinis. Shaken but not stirred. Martini drinkers are the most picky drinkers of all drinkers. In now, for all your martini, what's your preferred gin? Because I know you and I, we've talked about like Brokers and Amsterdam <laughs> and some of these middle shelf ones that are actually decent for a this martini. Is, this is expensive. Expanded quite a bit since the last time you and I have spoken about gin. Uh huh. Because I did some more research and tasting on gin. Uh huh. Big differences. Right now, right now, my current favorite gin for martinis is probably Aviation. It also happens to be my uh, Aviation gin also happens to be my favorite gin for the cocktail Aviation, what which is that? a Prohibition era cocktail. Okay, what's that? <laughs> which it is gin. Creme de violette, lemon juice, and gin. Oh, I said gin twice. Mm -hmm. Well, you like your this gin. is how a lot of my bounce goes because I'm usually tipsy by the time I bounce. Out. <laughs> Third hour, and we got about I know. three minutes. So, but gin usually oh, and luxardo. So gin has gin, luxardo liqueur, creme de violette, and lemon juice. Luxardo liqueur is a liqueur made from Thank maraschino you, cherries. You're welcome, Michael. Michael, Michael, service above self. But, well, um, I toast them every time. When I make an aviation, when I make an aviation, mm -hmm. I use two ounces of aviation gin, half ounce of Luxardo liqueur, half ounce of creme de violette. Currently, I'm using a, a creme de violette by Bitter Truth, and then I use about a, a quarter ounce of lemon lemon juice. I shake it over ice and strain it into our martini glass. And it is delicious. That's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at Kevin. He just commented and thing. Throw bits while I lay with my pussy. <laughs> that is a pretty kitty cat. It looks like a panda bear. This is Fred, his, which is his short Fred? name. His, his full name is Freddy Krueger. Uh, is there a silent Q in there? Uh? Is there a silent Q in his name? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh my god, that's oh. adorable. <laughs> you know, basically, if anybody has any questions about booze, I would happily take it. Now, do you want me to refer them to your Facebook page? Because uh, we've got to wrap it up. Now. Um, Facebook page, best place to meet me is on my personal Facebook page, which is under Sarah Camerata. C A M A R A T A. Because um, Calamity Dawn is linked to Sarah Camerata, 
You can also send a message to Calamity Labs, <laughs> which is our group page. Uh, so those are the best two places to get to me. All right. Very good. Is it almost 11? Yes, <coughs> we have five minutes. God I'm going to start the wrap-up. Ed, do you want to say something first? Yeah, yeah. before we wrap it up, and since we're talking about these, um, we... What is that? That's applause. That is... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> During the gaming show on this coming Wednesday, uh-huh. or next Wednesday, uh-huh. next Wednesday, yeah. we're going to be doing whiskey tasting. And one of the things I had, I was in Missouri. A lot of you know I was in Missouri traveling last week, couldn't be on the show. And while I was coming back, I wasn't actually in Missouri. I was touring Woodford Reserves Distillery in Kentucky because we were along the Bourbon Trail. Oh, my God. I was part of their competition recently. Oh, God. It was, it was fucking awesome, guys. And I was able to talk them out of three different bourbons for us to do a taste testing on Talk of the Tavern. Talk to so them gonna... like their sponsors. Yes. Uh, th- well, they they gave me a discount. So, good hey, enough. You know, we'll, we'll go with it. Good, good enough. So, we're going to be doing that next Wednesday. What time, Travis? One to four Eastern in the afternoon. Okay. I'm going to tune in for that. <laughs> Are you now? I'll discuss. I want to come over for that. Show. It's uh, okay. And since we are doing the wrap up, let's see. Hold on, let me find out what our date is. Tomorrow we have Dale Rolls of BB Black Dog on for our Tuesday tunes, where we're going to be talking about his music. Gaming Wednesday. We have Wednesday is middle aged gamers. Um, which, by the way, if we ever did a show from your bar there, Sarah, that would be the day to show up and do middle aged gamers. Absolutely. Wednesday is also coincidentally one of our slower nights of the week. Beautiful. So there'd be plenty of space for you. And it'd be middle of the afternoon, so it's a slow time. Um, and I will tell you this right now, Travis. Mm-hmm. If you, Andrea, Elizabeth, Kevin, I know it'd be of a stretch for you, Kevin. And <laughs> if any of you were to show up in my bar, I would spot you your first drink. Or I would buy your first drink for you. Uh, Ed's asking Good. for a mojito. All the drinks on our cocktail Let's menu. Let's see what time of the flight. Kevin, you can you can come visit me anytime. Anytime. Andrea. <laughs> Same with you, Ed. Before we go, before we go, think of someone that we could raid as we leave. Oh, and good. can we get a close up of the board from Elizabeth? Yeah. I want right to see now? Elizabeth's board. Real yeah. quick, while she's setting that up, I'm going to tell you, Wednesday we have Rod Belcher, yeah, steampunk yeah, author, yeah. great guy for Gaming Wednesday. We're going to geek out over games. Thursday we have Jenny Bjorkland, who did my Facebook profile yeah. pic, which is adorable. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Thank you, and I love how she put Talk of the Tavern, What's Your Vice? Uh, next Monday we do have memes. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about memes. And down the road, there's another, about memes. There's another show I want to talk to. Sarah about that she might be interested in being on, but I don't remember. I will be on whenever you want me. <laughs> there we go. Especially kids are older, you can get away now. Okay, we were I like that. I absolutely Monday. can. And I don't work Monday night, so there I'm yours. Uh I think it needs a Pokeball. <laughs> it needs a Pokeball. <laughs> Love it. It's a spider burger right in the middle. Beautiful. <laughs> No yeah. fucking spider burgers. Oh, that's great. Okay, I've guys. never been this <laughs> on a Monday night. For those of you who are watching this on YouTube after I post it there, don't forget to subscribe and follow the links below to find Sarah's goodies, if you know what I mean. And um, yeah, <laughs> if you like yeah. the other shows, don't forget to <laughs> sign up for the newsletter so you're informed of everything coming up. And going on, it looks like we get to raid Welsh Skipper tonight. So, hey. we've got 20 people. Everybody hang on, jump over there, say hello, and then bail if you need to. So we expand our community. It's always good. He does watch the show now and then. By the way, Michael Whitehouse says we have a gaming cafe here in Connecticut, but we don't have any gamer bars. That should be fixed. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to put the outro music. We can talk over it, but here it comes.
<laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. Music. Yeah, Bye. thanks, everyone. With one thing that makes I mean it. If any of you guys ever Don't find yourself a date, join us at the tavern next week. Any of you. Until then, please come see fun. me. There we go. Keep learning. It's not that far. It's only an eight-hour drive. I say that like now, raise your glass. I was gonna say I say that like Dave is like a great day. mecca for people to come visit. <laughs> it happens. Okay. I'm curious. Good night, Ian. Thanks, bro. Good night, everyone. Thanks for having me, everybody. All right. Oops. Good night, Ian. Good night, Toey. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Kevin, thanks for staying up so late. Oh, uh, Ed, it's thanks it's for being black. <laughs> You're most welcome. I try hard at it. You do a very good job. <laughs>